What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me, but I just got home off of an early morning flight, right? First thing through the door, I want to see my family. I love my family. You know, I'm a family man. I'm an advocate for families, right? Second thing, I got to get that hot shower because I got to throw the threads on. The threads make me feel like a million bucks. But the third thing through my mind and all throughout the trip is that I got to have that Tej pack. Tej makes my life uncomplicated. It's uncomplicated skincare for men. The first way that I started specifically was their level one system. It's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. Two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Here's the thing. My favorite part about Teach Henley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use and in what order. They really make in a process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin for men uncomplicated in addition to amazing skin members of Tej Henley get tons of benefits including at least 20 percent off the retail price the ability to customize your box exclusive monthly deals you can pause and cancel at any time and you get free shipping and because Tej Henley is sponsoring today's video they're offering my viewers an amazing deal right just click the first link in the description and you get 30 percent off your first box plus a free gift it's an amazing deal. You got to get started today. You're not out here trying to look like a dusty dusty. And if you travel as much as I do, which I'm sure most people don't, but you know me, I'm pushing my bag chasers in order to be in the top 5%, top 10%, top 1%. We got to make our lives uncomplicated. And Teach Henley is no better product. You got to look good. You got to smell good. And, and you can't be looking like a dusty dusty. Make sure you get started today. Click the link in the description. Get that Tej pack. Fill the Tej, my friends. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. It is Monday, March 11, 2023, 24, year of our Lord. <laughs> what up, friends and family? How y'all feel today? Mm-hmm. All is well. We was working this weekend. We was working, 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 working. What up, Peter Investor? Adrian Roberson in the building. OG Rihanna, Trees, Carlos, Ari Reed, Donaldson. All of my friends and family is in the building. Sean Jordan, I see you, Sabrina. Yeah. What up, Los? CJ said you still recovering. AB, what up? Trees, Mary Elizo. I see my girl Trap in the building. Sabrina, Trini Life, Juan Hunted, Juan Hunted. What up, Leslie, Aaron? How y'all feel today? Can I get one word? Lance said he feel refreshed. Battling the cold, but you still chasing the bag. Hey, you got to get better, baby. Can I get one word in the chat for how you guys is feeling today? I was the do topic of discussion this morning. Why was I the topic of discussion this morning, Regime? What exactly was I being discussed? Marcella, thank you, Amp is in the building, Trini Life. Uh, one word in the chat. Carlos said, ready, blessed, challenged, recovering, optimistic. Um, tired. Roxy says she tired. She's been partying all weekend. I know who Roxy is. Relieved, amazing, dope, blessed, tantalizing, good, grateful, strong, productive. Shout out to Breaked Out. Uh, Focus, grateful. Bitcoiner, fantastic, on point, blessed, grimy, persevering, uh, lucky, energized, exuberant, awesome, fasting, running it up, outstanding, covered, studious, uh, enthused, goaded, mending, fearless, amazing, Ramadan, money hungry, focused, ready, hashtag new chaser, shout out to Island Style <laughs> Uh, exuberant, motivated, Gucci, exhausted. What you been doing, Vanessa? Refreshed, hungry, crafty, enough, focused, thankful to have made it to 30. Today is your birthday. Hey, can we get a round of applause for Mrs. BH in the building? <laughs> Shout out to uh, Miami-Dade County clerks of the court said, humble, partying with dementia. Pa oh, that's got to be a boy. <laughs> Roxy says she been partying with dementia patients. 
Let me tell you something. I don't think that that could be a better party. Man, I would love to party with some dementia patients. You know why? Because we all going to wake up not knowing what happened the night before anyway. You could just let it all out. You could just leave it on the flow. Nobody going to know what happened. We could just have a good time, party, jump around, throw some birthday hats on. Man, that probably, that sounds like a, a hoot. Tell me you was out there having a good time. Man, I wish I could have an opportunity to be able to do something great like that. Let me know where that party is going to be at. Forget all of this new stuff. All of this stuff y'all got going on. All this new stuff y'all got going on, I ain't trying to hear that. I'm trying to party with some some people that don't even know what's going to what's what's happening tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We could just be having a good old time. Nobody going to remember what happened. Who you going to tell? <laughs> Who you going to tell? Man, ain't nobody going to know what's going on. We just going to party and have a good time like it's 1999. They don't even know what year it is. They don't even know what year it is. They just going to have some fun. So shout out to all of my people in the chat. I appreciate you. I'm going to read a couple of super chats. First, I want to acknowledge my guy, Mike That Dude. Mike That Dude, thank you for holding me down, my friend. I appreciate you. I also want to acknowledge my cow. Hold on, let me make sure that I get that correct. Because sometimes y'all be sending messages on Cash App that y'all be wanting me to read. And I don't be checking it all the time because I ain't as focused as I should be, but I'm on it. Mike Cal said, let's start the week out hot, hot, and have a good show. Thank you, my friend. I like these personalized notes that they got on Cash App. Mike, that dude said, appreciate you and the chaser. Shout out to the chasers. Let me get some housekeeping out of the way. First and foremost, if you are not a chaser, if you are not a Patreon member, then please, please, if you are looking to go in a direction or rock out with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're going in. The link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat for you to tap into the Patreon. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, we have Stock Club. Stock Club. I want to go over Rivian. Rivian over the weekend released a upcoming update for the R2 and the R3. And then the stocks start going crazy. I'm long, and I mean, I was ap I'm was absolutely long. I've been telling people that it's coming. Uh, I do not have inside information. But RJ Scarange is a phenomenal CEO. We're going to go over all of that, right? Because I told y'all what I moved out of and what I moved into. <clears throat> I made uh, a 43% gain in uh, December. Well, November. Was it November or December of last year? Oh, we killed it. We killed it. And I think that they stock is just going to. This is just my personal opinion. I break down the fundamentals. I'm going to go over Rivian. I'm going to break that down, and then we're going to go over into a lot of different things. Uh, jobs report, we got a lot of that going on. So if you're not a part of the Stock Club, if you're not a part of the Patreon, we do those live streams in the morning now. It's going to be on the morning and Wednesday, on Wednesday before the show. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also, shout out to Teach Hanley. Teach Hanley, 30% off your entire order now, plus new free gifts. I was supposed to record a new Teach Hanley to commercial over the weekend. I was just like, <sighs> I was knocked out. Man, I ordered me a new bike that was not delivered yet. I ordered a new e-bike. Cost me $2,500. Uh, I watched a movie called, uh, it's on Netflix, called Damsel. And I finished the series. Man, I finished the series for the first time in like three years. I finished uh, The Last Airbender. The Last Airbender. So we got a lot going on, and uh, we're going to run it up. And I'm excited to be before you guys today. I'm I was expecting some news to drop today that I know is already dropping. <clears throat> but they got to make sure that all of their legal ducks are in a row. And so I don't want to mention it. I don't want to say anything about it. I don't want to say what it's in reference to. So if it drops before the show ends, I will definitely tackle it. If it doesn't, then we will cover it tomorrow. OK, because I am absolutely anticipating this. I have to make sure that I keep my sources in order. I do not want to, uh, you know, mess up anything that anybody got going on. So I want to make sure that everybody wins and everybody get their bag. Uh, it is going to be incredible. All right. So if the story drops, I was anticipating to drop early this morning. Um, but if the story drops then we'll cover it, if not, then we keep it moving. Uh, we had to have some conversations with some people over the weekend. Uh, Boyce Watkins, Amani Talks, 
I've been going viral every single weekend. I don't know what that is. I've been going viral every week now. But that just means I can't tell you. I wish I could give you a hint. I cannot. I absolutely cannot give you a hint on this one. You know, I love to throw out them breadcrumbs, but I can't on this one because I promise. I absolutely promise, promise and I gave my word. And I am a man of my word. I gave my word that I would not say anything. But when it comes, you'll see it. You'll see it. All right. So we're going to, in the meantime, get to this money. We're going to tackle a lot of different things. So, so Sam today is requesting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who's requesting a partial payment? $6,000 is original contract. <clears throat> He's asking for a partial payment of $4,000 and a balance of $4,500 we'll do after we get to the rough. Man, if they don't get on out of here with that. These contractors is crazy, man. Anyways. Anyways, we're going to keep it moving. Let me make sure that I un undo that. What is this? Shelby Dispatch. Masonry. <sighs> I'll be going over in a, in a month or so everything that it cost me to build this house. It's for my first build. Uh, it's taken me less than a year to build it. And almost done. Less than two months out of finishing this house. Electrical is pretty much done. Uh... Heating and cooling heating and cooling cost me $32,000. So it's a lot going on. Let me read some of these super chats and then we're going to get into the show. Um, Mark Mech in the building says, you're my uncle. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Shout out to Martin Mech. If somebody passed away, then I absolutely want to offer my condolences. Thank you for supporting the platform. Uh, Gardner in the war. Shout out to Gardner in the war with the one ball. I appreciate all Super Chats. Anton is not unappreciative of anything. Also, last but not least, uh, Rob Brown says, shout out to AD and my fellow chasers. Shout out to the Cartez Cookies for the amazing product. Cartez, you get more, more visibility from that investment series than I'd have never had in my entire life. Uh, got mine, so make sure y'all get y'all's Cartez Cookies with a K. Shout out to Rob Brown. I appreciate you for holding me down, big dog. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with the show. So today's show... I want to go into uh, a lot of the different things that is plaguing us as a community, and I want to get into the deep diving because I know that tomorrow it's going to be chock full of full of crazy news if it don't drop today. But today's show, I want to get into Letitia James. I want to get into these homelessness encampments and what you guys can look forward to if you're not a part of the Bag Chasers. Mm. Shout out to Chris James. I'm going to read that shortly. I want to get into uh, quitting your job. It's a lot of people quitting their jobs to become entrepreneurs. It's a woman that I, I found a video for, and she quit her job to become a content creator. So I want to give you all a little bit of insight on that um, and so much more. So much more. We're going to go over the border crisis, fentanyl scanners that Biden referenced, jobs report. Whether or not you actually becoming more successful as a result of the new jobs added, what types of jobs they getting into, um, it's a lot. It's a lot. We gonna dig this uh, this Monday morning, uh, cause I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Chris James, shout out to Chris James. Chris James says, make sure I get an annual giving statement, big dog. Anton, the way you talking that talk, I gotta donate. Shout out to Chris James in the building. Hey, Chris been holding me down. And he been donating like crazy. Chris has got a bag out here. Shout out to the um, shout out to the chaser. Stranger things. You said jobs don't pay anymore. Okay, well then we're gonna have a conversation of what you're supposed to do. Thank you, Chris, for holding me down, big dog. I appreciate y'all. All right, we already over a thousand people that's watching this across multiple different platforms. It's time to get started with the show. I'm assuming that y'all gonna go ahead and get the likes right, because the likes is not. The likes is not 
It's not liking the same way that the viewers is in. But we're going to get there. I know y'all going to get that together. <clears throat> we're not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and get started with the show. First things first is we're going to start down in Miami, Miami Beach specifically, uh, and spring break. So things are changing. It's kind of like when I was looking forward to going to the Freak Nick. <laughs> by the time by the time I got old enough to actually get to the Freak Nick, to get there myself, instead of hearing the stories from my brothers, my older brothers that were six and seven years older than me, and my OGs and stuff like that, because they always was telling me, man, there's some crazy chicks down at the Freak Nick. And I was in middle school slash high school and all of that. F your feelings. Let me read that real quick before we get into it. FK your feelings says, how did you choose your realtor to build your home? I don't have a realtor. I got a realtor that I used to buy the, the land, but I have an architect and I have a um, Rita is playing general contractor. And the architect has assisted us because he's been with us for about, well, he's been around. He's been doing what he does for 30 years. He's been around me for about 10. Um, and we've been working a lot, and we've always been doing great things together. And he helped me actually design and build my restaurants, a couple of different restaurants that I'm a part of, including my first one. And so he's a master home builder. He's built multi-million dollar homes. He's actually building a home for uh, a billionaire child down in Miami, not Miami, down in Florida. And so I have an architect that I have a great relationship with, and I actually use my realtor to buy the land, but then the architect helped me source the contractors. And so what he's teaching us is everything that we need to know. And so I have him teaching me, which I am then also putting Rita in a position, and Rita is actually um, a master builder now. So she is on her second property. Uh, I have put her in that position as the president of one of my companies. And she is overseeing all of the construction and the development of all of my properties. So uh, the development arm that we created versus the uh, property arm is completely separate. And the architect is basically teaching Rita every single thing that he knows. And she is overseeing the construction, the development, working with the contractors, managing a budget and everything like that. Um, so we keeping all money in. So I don't have a realtor. Uh, I pay my contractors uh, on the spot. We do everything cash. We don't have any kind of financing. We don't work with banks. We don't do any of that. And so, um, yeah, man, I, I keep my people. Before we get into the spring break thing, let me say this. It's important for you guys. A lot of people don't understand this when I say it, but. Every woman that has ever come around me, worked for me, been around me, has always left when they go on to bigger and better things to be a better woman than they was before they came into it. And I also believe that it's important for you to give women tasks. And this is what I say a lot of times when I'm having a conversation with y'all and I say, hey, y'all need to be very, very careful about how it is that you manage these women because if you're only looking at them for box, and it's not just her. Right, I have a lot of different women that work for me. I actually have more women working for me than men, overwhelmingly, probably 80, 20. And I always say it's, imp it's important for you to exercise dick discipline. And the reason why that is, is because you'll get more out of it, both them and you, if you actually understand and see them and they recognize that you see them for more than just box. Most people can't divest themselves from just only looking at a woman for sex or looks, or any of that stuff, right? And the one, reason why women are so loyal to me and they so dedicated to me is because I'm not looking to contain you. I'm not looking to keep you bound. I'm actually looking to teach you and unleash you. You are there to serve as a help me. And women are much more loyal when it comes to having a purpose and they're like bulldogs, thinking of Ashley Merchant Chick. It's no other lawyer that was going as hard for that case than her. And so what I do is I empower women that are around me and teach them. And so it's funny to me when I see women getting their feelings just because I hold them accountable because I hold Rita accountable. I hold Rita accountable. I hold, I hold every single woman around me accountable. And they love that I hold them accountable. They yearn for that accountability. I kind of serve as like a father figure slash covering for them because when you hold them accountable, they know that I'm not doing it to get on them because they just bad people. They know that I'm doing it because I, I'm doing it in love. 
I want them to be successful. I want them to be more uh, greater than what they are. You see what I'm saying? So women yearn for accountability. They yearn for growth. They yearn for somebody to give them direction, guidance. Now the box just come with it, right? And so if it just so happened to be the box that you get as a result of marrying this type of woman, then cool. But that's not the focus. That's the extra. The focus is to give you a source of purpose. And so my job, whether it be in corporate America or whether it be the women that's around me or my wife, is to make sure that I figure out how to put them in the best position possible. I'm learning you. I'm learning you. I'm learning what your skill sets are how you work, exactly what your personality is, what would make you most useful and the things and the roles that I can place you in. My job as a leader, whether it be professionally or relationally, it's to make sure that I put you in the best position possible to succeed. I have never, ever fired anybody in my entire life. Now, people have left and gone on to do greater things, right? Because I want you to graduate. I want you to continue to grow. And so sometimes people feel like, listen, the only growth that I want is up under you. Other times people are saying, listen, I want to make money. See, stranger things don't understand. He's saying, stop simping, Anton. Every single woman in my life adds value into my life. If you are not a productive person, then there's no way that you can be around me. And so if you are around me, you gonna, you're not going to have no choice but to find some sort of purpose and to be useful. Women want to be used. They, want, they will die for you. They will go off the end of the earth with you if they believe in you. If they believe that you got their best interest at heart, they won't even think twice about doing whatever it is that you ask them to do. They won't even question you. Unquestioned obedience. And some people look at submissiveness and obedience as a bad word. It's not because then they become the beneficiaries of whatever it is that you're putting together for them. And so y'all don't understand how to leverage people in order to make sure that you get the most out of them and then it be productive for both you and them. So now she's in a position to where she knows how to build entire homes. She knows the entire process and, and, and ironically enough, not only did I teach her that, but I gave her a skill set. I gave her a skill set, not just so she, if anything was ever happening at Anton, where well, you're going to be taken care of for the rest of your life because he's, he's put up enough money and he got life insurance money and he got these properties and got these businesses and you just going to inherit it. No, she knows how to grow it. She knows how to never be interdependent on anybody other than her, her husband and other than her covering. She don't need nothing from nobody. She knows how to grow it. She understands how the money works. She understands how the process works. She knows how to deal with and negotiate certain deals with the contractors, the electricians, the HVAC, heating and cooling, right? Excavators, tree cutting services, architects, pulling permits. She's pulled every single permit for every single property, right? And so it's important for us to understand the way in which we're supposed to be operating in relationships. And when I said and I broke down, I said, listen, it's business first, but the love comes with it. People say, oh, my God, you're just a benevolent. Yes, I am a benevolent dictator, but I'm a king, and that's what it does. The buck stops here. Eventually, it always goes up. Complaints go up, not down. Complaints go up, not down. You complain to me, I go to God, I seek my insight and information, and then I come back to you and I give you your direction. And if they trust and they believe in you and you a man of your word, ultimately, you'll understand that submission is a great thing for them. And then it's also great for everybody because together we can pull 10 times our weight. So all I'm telling you guys is don't be so caught up in the verbiage and your, your feelings when it comes to how you feel about a certain thing or whether or not I don't want to be some, I want a partner. No, you want a husband, you want a covering. You want a person that can give you direction. You want somebody that can be a protector and a provider because protection and provision is also proactive, meaning that sometimes I can tell you something that you don't understand yet, but because I told you when you did it, you prevented yourself from being in this situation that's going to be negative for you. Every single woman that has ever been around me has always left 
or evolved to become a better version of herself. She's become whole around me. I don't want to contain you. I want to unleash you. You're there to be used. You're there to go out and source. You're there to go out and be a, a beacon of light. But more importantly, you're also there to become a reflection of me. So first you get the tutelage, then you can grow, and then I can unleash you. It says, Anton, women will stab your heart. No, not mine. Mine's rub my feet. It's a little different for me. Mine's rub my feet. I don't know what kind of hyenas y'all dealing with with my uh, rub my feet. Let's get into the show. Uh, again, let me read a couple of super chats, and 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 then we gonna get out of here. Yeah, you said how to. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for that question, my friend. All right, let's get into it. Spring break. Miami is breaking up with spring. Oh, look at me. Got the wrong one. Y'all got me all out of my out of my comfort zone. Miami is breaking up with spring breakers. All right. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon link is in the description, uh, as well as pin to the top of the chat. Look at me. I'm all unprepared, but we're going to get to it. Let's rock, y'all. This morning, spring break, Miami Beach, and peaceful all in the same sentence. We've actually been uh, surprised with how calm everything's been. That's something we haven't been able to say in years. Did you think it was going to be a crush of people off of Ocean Drive? Yeah, like a regular would be when we come. I've seen more police than people. To really get the full picture, it might help to see the beach from above compared to recent years when unruly crowds <laughs> and fatal shootings led to states of emergency, darkening the sun-soaked celebrations. This year, though, authorities cracking down to protect families and partiers alike. When you look around, what are you seeing today? A lot of police officers. <laughs> and but, but very friendly, smiling police officers. They're ready if anything happens. Police making more than 140 arrests so far, utilizing DUI checkpoints and barricades to block parking, which you'll see in front of Tracy Ravel's store, The Baked Bear, on nearby Washington Avenue. To know that our sales are down from the previous week pre-spring break, that's a huge impact for me. This one is Here's the thing. It's a yin and a yang. What every, every piece of good is always going to be some bad. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. I appreciate you. With all good, there's bad that comes with it. So now, business owners that became dependent or interdependent, kind of like they Black Friday, right? So on one hand, you can say, well, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's quieter. It's not as much rioting and all of this other type of stuff. But on the other hand, you're going to have business owners that's complaining and they're going to say, well, man, I was dependent on this because this is the time that we was running it up because we was dependent on a bunch of tourists to come in and support the businesses that's, that's here that make a lot of money off of spring breakers. This is pistachio. Ravel is grateful for the safety measures, but says the restrictions are eating into her profits by at least 20%. Can you fault the city for taking these steps? It's kind of hard to fault them because, again, we want them to be safe. We don't want Miami to shut down. We want people to want to come to South Beach. Right down the street, under normal circumstances, how crowded would this restaurant be right now? Uh, I will have at least half of the tables and maybe some people at the bar. I so have it would no not be one. Bolivar Restaurant is empty at 6 o'clock on a Sunday. I mean, if you're a customer and you want to, you see, oh, look, a Latin American restaurant and you have no place to, to park, what can you do? So this right here is devastating for business. Yeah, this is devastation for us. The upshot for the city and South Florida is that order is being restored. I think that with the barricades and just the police presence is making everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. In a place that's traditionally been a spring break haven for rowdy college students. Now, as millions again flock here to unwind, it's partying with parameters. If you abide by the rules, you'll have a great time. If you break the rules, we will deal with you accordingly. So it was interesting there to see the effect that this is having on businesses uh, in Miami. This crackdown, though, how, how long do we expect it to last? So it should be noted, Craig, that a lot of businesses are in support of these measures, certainly for the safety components. As far as how much longer this is going to go on, the enhanced parking restrictions like these barricades are going from Thursday through Sunday chunks for the next couple of weekends. And then we're also looking at a situation where all the parking garages in South Beach are closed for next weekend as well. Most of the other measures through the rest of March. 
Governor DeSantis here also saying he sent out some 140 patrollers, state troopers all throughout Florida, 60 here in South Florida. But the breakup has been successful so far as we have not heard any reports of violence or shootings. And of course, that is the best news we could be delivering. And you know, I guess, um, Chris James says, why is it a crackdown? Because people come there and they tear up every year. That's why it's a crackdown. It's a crackdown because people go there, they destroy Miami Beach, they tear up Miami, and then they leave and they go home. And then they leave it all of the carnage in a way. And so you can kind of say it's two things. Number one, people are happy because, you know, the police presence. And this is another thing that we need to advocate for more police officers is because it creates a safety component and it reduces crime. You haven't heard any reports of people getting shot or anything like that. And they holding it down. And they've been telling y'all for years, hey, you can't keep coming here and tearing up, uh, throwing bottles, tearing up the beaches, partying, and all of this stuff. And it actually really, really started a while ago. But then it really hit its apex during the pandemic because everybody was still flying down to Miami Beach. And this year they said, listen, we ain't even tripping. Y'all messed it up for y'all selves. We tired of y'all coming down here and tearing up. And this is what's going to be the result of it. And so the businesses is going to have to deal with it. They just gonna have to deal with it. I agree, Eric Daniels. We need more police nationwide. But it is a tail between two spaces because the businesses on the flip side are saying that, well, you know, we losing money. It was. It was a lot of used condoms. It was so bad down there that when I like I would make sure that I would leave before spring break. That's when I would usually head over to Biloxi or something like that. People in Miami Beach waking up to more calm this morning. This after new rules go into effect for spring break. And so far, the plan to break up with the out of control party scene seems to be working. Mm. Unlike past years here, the weekend wrapped up without any major incidents. We like waking up to calmness, yeah, right? No, no That's doubt. always a good thing. CBS News Miami's Terry Hortonstein. She's live in Miami Beach. And Terry, what's the reaction to the new rules? Hey, good morning. Yeah, it is very quiet out here, minus a street cleaner who just drove by us. But uh, it feels very different out here, you know, and people, depending on who you talk to, whether it's a visitor who came here to have some fun or a local who likes the quiet, well, the opinions are very different. And as we drove in today, I can tell you signs up everywhere. We've already seen some police out here. Roads are blocked off. It is very quiet. And I was out here last year after those two men were shot and killed. And let me tell you, it was a very different feeling. It's not like the spring breaks of the past on Miami Beach. Like I was expecting a lot of chaos, but it's been very calm. The city cracking down this year to prevent the chaos and violence we saw on Ocean Drive in March of 2023 and in years past. It's painful. It's hurtful when anyone is hurt on your streets. And I feel I have a moral and an ethical obligation to keep everyone safe in our city. I was here uh, one year ago. It's better. Lot of, uh, lot of police. This weekend, law enforcement all over South Beach. I see more cops on this street than we have in our entire town. I understand why there's police presence, but it gets annoying for like trying to like enjoy the nights and everything. Strict rules in effect. This year, no outdoor. I love to see police, but I don't know. I'm a little bit older. I don't want no problems. Dining on Ocean Drive, parking bans, more DUI checkpoints, and no alcohol sales after 8 p.m. You see like a cop car on like every 10 feet and I went to Publix and I couldn't buy wine after 8 p.m. surprisingly. And the changes seem to be working so far. Locals say they're relieved. Well, of course, it's way better than having, you know, madness on, on every corner. We're breaking up with you. And don't try to apologize and come crawling back. This isn't safe, so we're done. The city's now famous ad, Breaking Up With Spring Break, seeming to resonate with the people who live here. And Miami Beach police tell us there have been 143 arrests since the beginning of spring break. And, and well, no games. the rules that are in effect, they will be back in effect this upcoming weekend as more spring breakers head to South Florida. In Miami Beach, Terry Hornstein, TV. How much, what is the cost of a life? That's, that's the thing we need to ask ourselves. What is the cost of a life? If everybody have a good time and somebody gets shot or the cost of a life, 
Because people just got to make adjustments. You can't just go anywhere that you want to go and just tear it up, act a fool, and then think that everybody that's supposed to deal with it or, or, or fall out with the carnage, that's the end of the conversation. You can't just do that. You can't just go in, tear up something, and then walk away and then think that everybody is supposed to deal with it. I don't even like being around that many crowds. I'm surprised that y'all like being in those type of environments. Those are police patrolling Miami's South Beach on ATVs as spring break gets into full swing. We've told you how authorities are trying to keep crime down with clever PSAs, saying Miami was breaking up with spring breakers so they should stay away. But is it working? Amber Cogliano finds out firsthand. Look at that. So y'all telling me that's worth it? That's worth it? Y'all, listen, this is years past, see? We don't really realize how good you get it until you go back to the way you had it. That ain't worth it. People, cars getting jumped on, windshields cracked, shot, guns everywhere, people driving in from places. The real question that we should be asking ourselves is, where are people going instead? Are people going instead? Are they deciding to stay home? Airbnbs be toe up, couches, condoms inside of the couches, all of that. Nah, man, this is a different thing. This is the, this ain't going in and, and just having a good time and showing off and, you know what I'm saying, busting it down and, and keeping it G. This is different. Now, it's almost like they different. They got a whole nother mentality. They, they fighting and jumping on your car and it ain't no limits and crack your head open. And, man, ain't nobody got time for that. It's, it's not the same. Look at this nonsense. This year's spring break in Miami Beach looked like this. This year, it looks like this. Now y'all messed it up for everybody. A massive police. Everybody messed it up. That's it. You got some people, and because y'all didn't hold each other accountable, y'all came in from out of town, y'all not from there, and you came in and you messed it up for everybody. These presents and few spring breakers. So we are on the famous Ocean Drive strip here in Miami Beach and take a look. You can see it's spring break and it's pretty quiet. Apparently, Yo, it don't even look like that. It don't look like that on a regular winter weekend. On a winter weekend, it be jumping. It's jumping over there on a regular weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, car to car. It's like the strip. It's like how Belle Isle used to be back in the day. <laughs> and that was bad too. But on a regular day, it's people walking up and down and, and it's, it's lit. I bet you they just want to go back to the regular thing. Getting the message that Miami Beach is breaking up with spring break as seen in this public service announcement. This isn't working anymore. And it's not us, it's you. 6 p.m. beach closures, DUI checkpoints, and back searches are putting a further damper on what is a rite of passage for college kids. He may be losing out on business, but David Wallach, who owns the famous Mangos Tropical Cafe on Ocean Drive, says he couldn't be happier. I was in 16 stampedes last year. They set a curfew in in the third weekend at 12 o'clock at night. I closed Mangoes at 7.35. I didn't wait to the curfew. Miami Beach Police Chief Wayne Jones. Well, the breakup was necessary. We, we you know, it, it, for us, it's like a, a divorce. And Talk to him, you strong black man. You see that? You see that strong black man is going up there and saying, listen, this is necessary. This is like a divorce. It's going to be bittersweet, but it's like a divorce. Everybody needs to go their own way. Our kids are grown. Everybody needs to go their own way. Get it, black man. We're hoping it's an amicable divorce. Well, breaking up is hard to do. I want to have a good time. I can't even have a good time. Everybody is like. I think they should leave us alone because we're here having fun. We don't mean no ill intention. We're here having a good time. So there shouldn't be this much police population. When they did the Nah, nah, go home. Go home. Go home. They should leave us alone. See, it's, it's, just, it's not just black people. It's, just not, it's not just women that's looking to take their top off and get naked. Listen, girls trips, over. We going back to the old ways in, the, in our red states. In our red states, it's over. Put your clothes back on. Somebody saved you from getting pregnant, baby. Somebody saved you from getting pregnant, baby. Go home. 
the whole commercial for the Miami, like, we're breaking up with you. It's not that fun anymore. Bro, go home. Go home. Nobody owes you anything. Tear up your own city. Tear up your own states. We're no longer subjecting ourselves to the foolishness. Uh, can I give a, a round of applause for my guy, Frank da uh, Danvi? Oh! Sent me the cash app, says, for the coffee, elder bro, Anton D, keep being real. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you, Frank, for the cash app. Let me acknowledge a couple of super chats, and then we're going to move over with the show. Uh, Legarrett says, support. Thank you, Legarrett. You are absolutely positively appreciated here. Uh, I cannot, I, listen, I cannot say any more than I have right now that you guys really, really do hold me down. And I'm a man of the people. This ain't because of no algorithm. This is 100% because of y'all. Tyree says you're an inspirational. You are an inspirational on AD. Shout out to you. I appreciate you. He says, uh, I don't know if I agree with that ad will lead to a police state. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of police stating. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of police stating. Delt Rex says it be them single baby mama kids that don't know how to act. F and R ish up down here in South Florida. I love South Florida. I hope it's not underwater in the next 20 years, but I absolutely love South Florida. Thank you, my friend Delt Rec, for holding me down and for the super chat. I appreciate you. Let's continue. West Coast. West Coast, then. Yes. West Coast. Shout out to uh, Dr. Dre Snoop. Easy E, Ice Cube, MC Ren, Yella. Shout out to all of the West Coast. I listen. I always knew that the West Coast uh, was different. I knew that they had a growing homeless population as I continued to uh, navigate through college and then adulthood and stuff like that. But when I went over to the West Coast for the first time in my entire life as an adult, I was absolutely floored. I had went once as a child. My father had took us down there or whatever, and we was having fun. But when I went as an adult, I was absolutely floored. I was amazed. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what it looked like. And every single time that I went there, shout out to Time Out. I'm going to read this Super Chat shortly. Every single time I went to the West Coast, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Shout out to Mac 10 Nothing but a cabbie hit. Westcott, dog pound. What do you consider fun? That's the bomb. That's the bomb. All day, night, and all night long. That's the bomb. That's the bomb. Yeah. Shout out to Dub C. Westside Connection. Yay, yay. I just couldn't believe. I look great. This RD. You trying to get on my good side today. You trying to get on my good side today, D. Ooh, you know, I love it when women give me a compliment. I love it when a lady say, Anton, you looking good today. I say, do I? I've been in the gym. You like that? I like that gym. <laughs> but the homeless encampment is getting a little bit out of control. Everybody living van life over on the West Coast. Nobody can afford anything. The Chinese is buying up all of the properties, and everything is messed up out here in these streets. Let's go ahead and show you what's happening out here on the West Coast. Yay, yay. A look at this, an apparently homeless man climbing across telephone wires in the middle of the night, yelling that he's high on methamphetamine. Now, let's... <laughs> we gonna start this off right. We gonna start this off right. Detroit looking great. <laughs> Devastator. Listen, I know you want to hate, but you should really look at my videos every day. I was out there walking the streets of Detroit at 3 o'clock in the morning after I left my office the other day, and I felt just fine. Just fine. Walked home. I walked home from here the other night. Yay, yay. You got a man. I guarantee you this. Regardless of what needs to be done over here, you're not going to see a man that's climbing and ri riding around on his telephone poles. Talking about I'm high off methamphetamines. <laughs> Man, it's a walking insane asylum on the West Coast. Do you see this? 
This man is on the telephone. Po- Bro, you know how many volts of electricity is flying through those? That man is on. Yep, you're right, Chris Thomas. Detroit was voted to have the number one art museum, the DIA, which I've been telling y'all about. We was voted to have the number one river walk and the number one art museum in the entire country. That's a fact. We was voted to have the number one river walk. Listen, look it up. We was voted to have the number one river walk and the number one art museum in the nation. In the DIA and the river walk. That's a fact. A lot of people don't know that, though. A lot of people have no clue. But because they just go on based off of what they think that they know, it's not true. But let, let, let's, let's continue to talk about the West Coast. What do you consider fun? That's the bomb. That's the bomb. All day, night, and all day long. That's the bomb. That's the bomb. There are now tens of thousands of homeless people living on the streets of L.A., suffering from severe, severe addiction and mental illness. And the city is now yes, spending than a y'all record River Walker, amount of money to bring the homeless inside. We booming over here. But that money is it helping the most vulnerable on the streets? The I team's Joel Grover has been looking into this issue for years, and he joins us now with his latest investigation. Joel. Well, the city of L.A. will spend $250 million this year on the Inside Safe program, the centerpiece of the mayor's effort to bring the homeless inside, off the streets for good. But often left out of that solution are the toughest cases, the unhoused who require highly specialized treatment and housing. Look at that nonsense. In the middle of the night, a homeless man crawls across telephone wires in a Venice neighborhood. Oh my God, oh my God, what is he doing? Refusing to come down, even though cops and firefighters try for hours. Earlier that same night, neighbors say the man was seen riding on top of a city bus. I don't think anything shocks us at this point anymore. Residents like Amy Castillo say... He was swinging from here to there, here to there. Incidents like this are now a frequent occurrence in their neighborhood. Despite the city spending hundreds of millions of dollars to ease homelessness. I think they're tackling homelessness as a big picture, but not looking at those who are truly mentally ill or unstable. The I-team has found there is very little help right now for the unhoused who are suffering from severe addiction and mental illness. Like 30-year-old Caleb DeWitt, who I first found back in 2019 when I was driving around Hollywood with Carrie Morrison. He does not look good. Founder of Heart Forward, a group trying to improve care for people like Caleb. Caleb, I learned, was from a small town in Ohio, once the star of his high school play. But he ended up addicted. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Was that Caleb? Was that fat Caleb? Oh, snap. Now, don't y'all go over to California and start doing that Fenty. That Fenty trying to get skinny. Don't y'all go over to California and start doing that Fenty trying to get skinny. What happened to my, uh, my video? My video ain't right. All right, we're going to get that right. For some reason, my video ain't right. But don't y'all go to California trying to get that Fenty. It ain't for you. All right? It ain't for you. Ohio, once the star of his high school play. But he ended up addicted to meth and living on a Hollywood sidewalk for years. He was also diagnosed as being bipolar. I-team's Joel Grover found thousands of people who are battling things like mental illness are... After NBC4 did a story on him in 2019, caseworkers found him a temporary spot in a rehab and he started to improve. But he eventually wandered off and and since then, I've seen him back on the streets year after year, sometimes smoking meth. Yeah, I'm addicted. I have an addiction. And just this fall, Carrie yeah. Morrison and I found him again. Do you know? Do you know what month it is? Curled up on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. It's a little bit like deja vu. I mean, we as a community have really failed him. 
let him down. LA now has a major effort to get the homeless off the streets and into permanent housing. It's the mayor's $250 million a year program called Inside Safe. Is Inside Safe the right program to get someone like Caleb off the streets? I don't think Caleb would do very well in Inside Safe. He has unfortunately decompensated to the place where he probably needs to be in a more clinical setting to get statewide. I think it is a crime to allow him to be on the streets like that and die. LA Mayor Karen Bass. Is there enough housing and services for people like Caleb? Absolutely not. That's why Caleb is on the street. Dozens of facilities in LA that once housed the mentally ill have closed in recent years, like this one in San Pedro, which was turned into a condo project. So the mayor is urging people to vote next month for California's Proposition 1, which would authorize over $6 billion to build treatment facilities for the homeless with mental health and substance problems. Problems, but money isn't the only obstacle. So, okay, so hold on. They was giving him treatment. He was getting better. And then he decided that he wanted to walk away and hit, hit the streets. So, how is it? They send, they literally spend billions of dollars, billions of dollars every single year in order to support this. They spend, listen, you can offer as much housing if you want. I'm going to just be honest with you. You know what it's going to do? It's going to wind up going right back to the thing. Look, 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 it's the drugs. We got to get to the core and the root of the problem. And I'm going to talk about the core and the root of the problem. I appreciate everybody that's supporting the platform. Let me let me play the rest of this. There's a lot of people intervening in the lives of somebody like Caleb, but no clear responsibility for actually putting together what he needs. Professor Alex Barnard wrote this book detailing California's failure to care for the mentally ill and addicted. He says there are numerous agencies and nonprofits trying to help these people, but not one that's really responsible for them. It's too easy for, again, every provider in the system to say, you know, this is really someone else's problem. Like well, how would how did it become our responsibility for them doing what it is that they doing? Just curious. At what point does it become personal responsibility? Because I mean, you can you can give everybody everything that they want, and ultimately it's just gonna end up right back the way that it is. Trust me, I know. Some people love the streets as as bad as it is. Some people love the streets that incident with the homeless man on the telephone wires. When police couldn't get him to come down, they took their yellow tape down and left him in a vacant building. <laughs> oh, when they couldn't get, hey, 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 they couldn't, couldn't, get, <laughs> they couldn't get him to come down. I was like, hey man, roll that tape up, bro. We out of here. Hey, bro. He don't want to come down. He want to surf. He want to swag surf on buses. And he want to be Spider-Man. We're going to take our tape down and we're going to go ahead and get on up out of here, bro. They left him in an abandoned building. And they said, man, listen, you do what you want to do. You do what you want to do. Because if we, if we come and get you down and then you try to sue the department anyway, it's going to all be bad anyway. So I'll tell you what. You do what you want to do. We're going to take this tape down. You have a good time, buddy. I was clearly not well. Residents like Amy Castillo were afraid for their own safety and for the safety of the homeless man. We don't know what to do Nobody about to be as a community you. to help somebody you in that situation. Be but there be are tiny glimmers of hope for some of the toughest cases on the streets, like Caleb DeWitt. There is nobody that really feels accountable for Caleb. After we found him on the sidewalk last fall, Carrie Morrison made some calls and Caleb got into a new L.A. County pilot program at the old Mark Twain Hotel in Hollywood. There are beds for just 58 people out of the thousands of mentally ill and addicted on the streets. 
have a clean place to stay. Caleb can stay at the Mark Twain for up to two years and supposedly gets mental health and addiction treatment. But this once smiling kid from the high school play told me he's still doing meth. Are you still using? Yes. And so if there's no requirement and you could just stay for free, listen, bro, you can stay for free. You're going to go out, you're going to hunt, you're going to find money in order to do meth. And you could do what you want to do when you want to do it. There is no actual solution. See, I see a lot of people, and I agree sometimes with Eric Daniels, and a lot of times they don't. And they say, hey, man, we need to make sure that we get these people off the streets. Well, if you don't actually solve for the problem, all you're doing is continuing to enable the problem. You're not doing anything except for enabling bad behavior. I'm just going to be 100% with you. All you're doing is enabling bad behavior. You're not solving for the problem. If he's still out there doing meth, but you can just live for free, then that means that he just got more money to do meth. And I'm just going to be honest. You're not talking to a person that's not familiar with homelessness. I've done, I've done the work as far as helping homeless people. All he got is more money to continue to do meth. He's still hearing voices in his head. I've heard of like magic and stuff in my head about other worlds. Caleb says when his Jeez, two years at the Mark Twain are up, he has no idea where he'll go. Do you think he'll ever be able to live off the streets for good? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. In the L.A. area, there are 4,000 units of housing now being built for the homeless. But I asked the mayor's office to name which, if any, projects will be specifically equipped to treat the severely addicted and mentally ill. They said there will be some, but they couldn't name them. 4,000 more units. That's going to be. Now, let me, now let me tell you all something. This is not just 4,000 units and they saying, oh, man, it's going to be built for the homeless. There's no way to sustain this. And you know what y'all doing? You guys are actually also, also going to be the ones that's paying for it. Y'all paying for it. When y'all look at the budget over in California, if I pull up the budget right now, because I pulled it up before, if we pull up the budget over in California, you know what it's going to say? All of this money going over to social services, same thing, different day. Same thing, different day. Y'all paying for this. And not only are you paying for that, you're paying for the salaries of all of the people that's in the nonprofits in which 85% of it go to administrative services. You're paying for it. Everybody that lives in California, everybody that lives over there on the West Coast, if you in Hollywood, L.A., look, I'll show it to you. 530, a troublesome homeless encampment in Hollywood is starting to grow again after the city recently cleared it out. Good evening. This is the KTLA 5 News at 530. I'm Cher Calvin. And I'm Micah Ullman. Neighbors say they have witnessed people buying and selling drugs. There have been break-ins and at least one man was attacked. Tonight, those neighbors are sharing their frustrations. KTLA's Rachel Menatov joins us live in Hollywood with more. Rachel. Chair Micah, residents say it took the city three months to clean up this particular homeless encampment on Hollywood Boulevard near Taft. The problem is it seems to be slowly returning, and when it does, it brings with it all kinds of illicit activity. A persistent problem plaguing neighborhoods around Hollywood and beyond. It starts with one tent, and then they basically, you know, become a whole line of, you know, maybe five or six tents combined. Pre-cleanup, it was pretty dystopian, that's all I can say. It was like a Mad Max movie. This one was the worst. Homeless encampments like this one on Hollywood and Taft growing in size. Longtime resident Brian Winchell says while he sympathizes with those down on their luck, he says people in these encampments steal power from local buildings, leave behind mounds of trash, cause disruptions at all hours of the night, and most concerning of all, bring violence and drug buyers and sellers to the neighborhood. Look at that. Look at this, y'all. This is normal out there. You know what they got? Good weather and doo-doo on their streets. You know, listen, you're not just dealing with people that's saying we ain't got no place to stay. You're dealing with people that say we're going to use drugs. 
We're going to tear up the community. We're going to steal power. We're going to throw our trash on the street. This is this is America. This is one of the most successful places on earth and some of the most prosperous cities and states in the world. And it looks like this. This is normal. I don't know if y'all have ever been to L.A. and Hollywood. Listen, I went to Hollywood. I was on Hollywood. The first time that I ever went to Hollywood in particular was when I went to the Dr. Phil show. And they had me stay very, very close so that they can get me a car. And then they drove me over to whatever. And they put me in a nice hotel. And then I went out the back of the hotel in order to go down to Hollywood Boulevard during the walk, the Stars Walk. It was the worst thing. I, it smelled. It smelled like death. It smelled like pee and death. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this was a tourist destination. And I already told y'all that they had different types of Michael Jacksons out there. I ain't going to tell y'all about Michael Jackson again. But it smelled like piss and death. And I was like, hmm, what is that? What is it? The police officers made sure they stayed in packs. Like, they made sure they stayed together because they knew that individually they would get mobbed and they would get their head, their head cracked in. It smelled like piss and death. Now, maybe it don't smell like death anymore, but it definitely is probably smelling like piss. Sean Lewis tell you I'm out here in L.A. and I see it firsthand. I walked down, me and Rita, we walked all through Skid Row. I fed people. I, I talked to people. I got some insight. I'm telling you, it's bad. It's very, 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 very bad. It is horrible. Horrible. Whole lot of Michael Jacksons, but it was the old Michael Jacksons. It wasn't the, like, like the newer Michael Jacksons, it was the older Michael Jacksons. Neighborhood. He's disappointed in city leadership too. We pay their paycheck, that's my big beef. We pay their paycheck and they have failed miserably to provide a safe place to have my house and to have my dwelling place. I've worked hard for it and so have my neighbors and we all don't feel safe walking to the 7-Eleven. We are scared that we're gonna step on a used syringe or there's human doo-doo everywhere. Another neighbor, Osco Acopia. And there's human doo-doo everywhere. Don't, don't y'all know that in San Francisco and LA, you, when you walk, you have to look down when you walk. You know why? Because it's doo-doo every, it's human feces all over the, the ground. When I did my meetup on the West Coast in L.A., I didn't even stay in L.A. I stayed in Glendale. I didn't even stay in L.A. I stayed in Glendale. I said, I can't do it. I can't do it, Rita. I can't do it. Us, us Detroiters are used to better than this. <laughs> I know we had a lot of abandoned buildings, but we ain't had no poop on the streets. I tell you that. For some, listen, we went through what we went through over in Detroit. We didn't have no poop on the streets, though. We didn't have no, I said, Rita, I can do a lot of things. The one thing, and listen, it's, it's two things that I can't do. Roaches, if I see a roach, I'm gone. I know a lot of y'all down there in the south, y'all call them water bugs. No, they roaches and they fly. A lot of y'all down in L.A., Y'all keep calling them, oh, 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 those, those are just water bugs. I said, nah, from where I'm from, that's called a roach. That's called a riggedy, riggedy, riggedy roach. Oh, that's normal. Those are around all year long. I said, oh, no, I'm going to just come and visit. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here with all of these flying things that's all over the place. Oh, that's just a water bug. No, that's not a water bug. I don't know where you got that from, but it's not a water bug. Yeah, they be flying, and they big. <laughs> they, they big. Texas, Florida. I said, what? No, no. No, no. It's two things I can't do. I can't do bugs. Keep your bugs. And I can't do doo-doo on the ground. <laughs> Two things I can't do. No, no. You keep your flying bugs and you keep your doo-doo to yourself. 
You know monkeys throw doo doo at you when they mad at you, right? Y'all, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. When when monkeys get mad, they throw doo doo at you. Yeah. I said y'all just prehistoric over here on the West Coast. Y'all just prehistoric on the West Coast. Y'all acting just like animals. Don't you know that that animals throw doo doo at you when they pissed at you? Have y'all ever seen any of those? Go ahead and mess up your YouTube algorithm and look up monkey throw doo doo. It's a regular thing. <laughs> this is why they won't they won't put me on national TV. They know I got the best show on earth, but they won't put me on national TV because they said Anton, we don't want you talking about doo doo on national TV. That's not gonna be good for. Us. I said, what? The? If y'all don't want to get the people the truth, then what am I supposed to do? took this video as LA City crews attempt to clear the tents and trash this week. <laughs> Caution tape now surrounds the sidewalks, but the trend seems to be within a day or so, the encampment returns and continues to torment those who live here. So we called the 311 and we called the, you know, um, all the, the politicians that are, you know, in this district, and it's really very slow to respond with any kind of uh, action. Martha Burr has lived here for 30 years. She says there's a criminal component to this. Her elderly neighbor was actually mugged and attacked Apex by a member of the encampment. So she hopes police take more of an active role. I mean, if, if we see them, you know, smoking crack and selling drugs, you know, continue. <laughs> Where are we living? If we see them smoking crack, man, don't you know that crack used to be an urban problem? Y'all used to do coke. Y'all wasn't doing crack. Crack was crack was in the hood. It was in the Bronx. It was in Detroit. It was in Chicago. That was in the urban communities. Yeah, y'all remember that scene on uh, Minnesota Society? He's like, I got these cheeseburgers, man. I got these cheeseburgers. And MCA was like, man, leave him alone, dog. Yo, dog, come on, man. And then the old dog was like, man, what you say to me? I ain't gonna say the other part that he said. Man, what you say to me? You do what? Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I got these cheeseburgers, man. Man, listen, crack wasn't a thing. What you mean? They oh, white people in the open in California just out there blazing a crack pipe? <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. This is insane. And he didn't just have cheeseburgers, he got double cheeseburgers. Continuously, uh, you know, I just wonder why the police couldn't do a little bit more to keep an eye on them. Because y'all told them to stop. Y'all said no more police, defund the police, don't touch nobody, you're going to get sued, all of that. Y'all told the police to be quiet, and so the police is pulling back. And we spoke to council member Soto Martinez's office today. It says it will continue to provide regular cleanings to this site. It also says it referred every single person to housing and they're ready to go as soon as beds open up. The problem is that uh, we don't exactly know when this will be. There are 3000 homeless individuals in this district and only 400 beds to accommodate them. It's getting worse. It's going to get worse before it get better. It's going to get worse before it get better. I'm telling you, y'all better be careful. Y'all keep on supporting all of these bad policies. It's going to be right in your home. And then you're going to be wanting to move to somewhere else. No, stay where you at. Stay where you at. This is what y'all wanted. Shout out to Time Out. I appreciate you holding me down. Pookie's friend Ray Ray, shout out to Ray Ray in the building, says, I went to a homeless camp looking for a fight and got whooped by six or seven, seven or eight of them. <laughs> Had footprints on my face and body for two days. <laughs> Why would you go to a homeless camp and look to get into a fight? Marcella Ho says, homie in NorCal hide in the green belts. Hmm. Your homies in NorCal hide in the green belts. What's the green belts? I don't know what the green belts are. You got to fill me in, Marcella. Mr. Lott says, my Mr. Telephone Man, 
There's something wrong with my line, Mr. Telephone. Shout out to Mr. Lot. Y'all keep on trying to hit me with this trivia. Y'all not going to stump me. Y'all not going to stump me. Listen, I have a memory that is full of six, seven decades worth of content. Music, movies, pop culture, books. I know it all. I seen Bobby Brown this weekend, and he was doing his two-step. Let me see your one two-step. I love it when you. Matthew Washington said the way you handled that boys' talk was surgical. You think so? I thought I was just having a good conversation. Enforcer two K nine says, "Yo, what the f just happened to just say no to drugs?" No, remember y'all said that the war on drugs is lost. We just want to make sure that we legalize everything. Now y'all trying to legalize prostitution. Sly Guy 23 says, we got the worst of every state here in California. And most of these bummy mother effers, not even from here. All these small city big dreamers have messed up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That is very, very much true. Kathy Green Jones says, thanks for the wisdom. They are lying about finding places for the homeless. They are putting the homeless out of those facilities and putting migrants in their place. I heard that too. Self-made forever is in the building. Forever, ever, forever, ever. AD, you've made millions of dollars. You've built real estate and restaurants. You've created a family legacy, helped you help the homeless. You've invested in businesses. What haven't you accomplished yet? That's a good question. What is it that Anton wants to do? You know what's so funny about that? Somebody was talking to me. Um, who was talking to me? Now I got to try to remember. We was talking about power and taking over or something like that. <sighs> I got to figure this out. Was it a coaching call? And it was like, what's next? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? Do you just run around and say, I said, no, I want to take over a city. I said, I want to create a whole community. I want to empower people. I want us to go over and take over this and take over that. And we want to completely change the culture and all of this. And it was like, man, you want to be a, a mini God. Like, no, is that what it is? We are made in God's image. We're made to conquer. We're made to conquer. So, you know, once you get past the simple stuff, then you want to change the culture. You want to, I understand why super duper duper billionaire rich people um, create policy and they determine what our food are and they see and they shape the world in their image. They think that it's better the way that they think about it, and that's the way that they go about implementing things. So I can understand it because the more power you get, the more power you feel like you need in order to change the environment and the culture. Apex Life says, yo, you made me spit out my coffee at <laughs> on my computer. Bugs and doo-doo. We don't do bugs and doo-doo. We lead the bugs and the doo-doo to the doo-doo birds. Uh, Brittany B says, Miss West, stand up. They sleeping on us. Let them keep sleeping. We're going to keep running up the back. Dialect 1 says, Anton, saw you pull up on Moist Stream uh, when his Wi-Fi went out and you briefly took over the show. I left my A off. Great stream. Shout out to Boys Watkins. We had a, a come to agreement, come to Jesus moment. Uh, I don't have any smoke for boys. I think we had a great conversation. We settled some things. Jamal Fowler says, we live in a crazy world. We need God ASAP. ASAP, 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 ASAP. McCall's Wellness and Motion says, a donation for the burger. <laughs> Stay blessed. Shout out to McCall. I love you. I love you. You always supporting me. And P. Shank. Good morning, Mr. Ant and P. Shank always tell me good morning. Don't say nothing else. Just throw it in there and just say good morning. Thank you, P. Shank. Dark 80s man is in the building says, you did that Boyce Watkins voice. Oh, my God. No, me and Boyce is cool now. Me and Boyce don't have no problems. Me and Boyce got a, got a settlement. We got we got an agreement. We we see things similarly now. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Did y'all know that Letitia James? Y'all know who Letitia James is? Do y'all know who Letitia James is? Letitia James is. <laughs> Letitia James is the woman that got elected, re-elected, and prosecuted Trump in a whole New York case in which he's alleged to owe like $355 million or something like that, and he's going to appeal or whatever. But Letitia James showed up at a firefighter ceremony uh, to honor firefighters, and guess what? Everybody, I didn't know that everybody in New York wasn't walking with Letitia James. She showed up to a... a, a 
New York Fire Department meeting ceremony, and she was going to give a speech. And they booed her. They booed her the entire time. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Attorney General Letitia James. Hey, she walked just like a she built and she walked just like a penguin. You know what I think, honestly, if you if you rewind it a little bit and you look at her. And you look at this side profile. You look at this side profile. I believe that they get some of the most evil, unsavory, demonic, bitter women to fill some of these positions. You don't see a woman that's truly living in her femininity, that enjoys life, that got a man, that, you know, is in a good space. You don't see any of those type of women in these evil, angry positions that then go on to prosecute and throw people under the bus. You don't see that. You see women as penguins. Seriously, penguins. Are we going to say what we really think or are we just, do y'all want me to keep it PC? Or <laughs> do you want me to keep it PC or do you want me to be for real? Do y'all want to keep it PC or do you want me to keep it for real? I'm going to show you what I see when I see her. You know what I see when I see her? Honestly, when I see her, this is what I see. Norbit! 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 That is what I see when I see her. <laughs> this is one of my most favorite movies of all time. Me and my brother laugh at this movie so much. We crack up at this movie so much. That's what I see when I see her. Angry, bitter, evil, and always got something to say. Respucia, that's what her name was, Respucia. Thank you, chat. Norbit! Hey, Respucia. <laughs> hey, Respucia. Hold on, I got to call my brother on this one. I got to see if he going to get the trivia right. This movie got bad reviews, too. <laughs> Greg D. Oh, man. I'm on a live stream. I got a trip. <laughs> I'm, I'm on a live stream, but I got a trivia question for you. No, I don't do trivia. I got a trivia question for you. Okay, go. All right. Our favorite Eddie Murphy movie of all time. <laughs> what is our favorite Eddie Murphy movie of all time? Norbit. <laughs> Why are you asking me that? It's not trivia. <sighs> Why do you like Norbit so much? There's so many reasons. It's just a good time. It's just a good movie, and it reminds us of, you know, some of our family and <laughs> different stuff like that. <laughs> some big back activities in there. You know, there's plenty of stuff going on. It's just, just a great all of <laughs> <laughs> Why are you calling me at this 
foolish. All right, I got to go. I got to go. Okay. Bye. Norbit. That's what I see when I see Letitia James. Rasputia. All right, y'all. We got to get back to the core of the show. <laughs> Norbit is a Chris. That is our personal Christmas movie. Norbit is our personal Christmas movie. One of the best Eddie movie mur- movies of all time. I know it got panned by the critics because they didn't understand. That's because they didn't understand black culture. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Go Norbit. Have y'all ever seen that scene? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we continue, I got to get y'all to see. Have y'all ever seen Norbit dance? And he was dancing with the, the, the light-skinned chick that ain't have no, uh, that ain't have no rhythm. And Rasputia seen it. Norbit. I got to just play this. Y'all tell me if y'all don't see Letitia James in this in this scene right here. Just just quickly, just quickly. I know that they're going to ding the, the stream on this one, but it's okay. We're going to rock with it. Lean with it. Rock with it. Lean with it. Rock with it. Y'all ever seen this scene? Hold on. See if I can fast forward it to the scene. Terry Crews is in this scene too. Waiting for me. Come on, dance with us. No, I really, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I won't kill a child. I'll kill a child. <laughs> Woo! Ah, that's Letitia. Had to move, cause. Dang, this had Cat Williams in it too. The hell is Norbert with that wine cooler? This is here. Letitia. Go Norbit, go Norbit. Let's get back to Letitia James. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Attorney General Letitia James. There go Rasputia. Oh, come on, we're in a house of God. <laughs> Deep voice and everything. Oh, come on. (laughs) We're in a house of God. So was Fannie Willis. First, um, simmer down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting it out of your system. I want to thank Commissioner. Ooh, she says simmer down. Simmer down. She told the firefighters. She says, simmer down. I listen, this is different. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting it out of your system. I want to thank Commissioner Kavanaugh and Chief Hodgins for that recognition. And today's today we are making history. Swearing in our first African American woman chaplain of FDNY. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Attorney General Letitia James. Oh, come on, we're in a house of God. <laughs> first, um, Simmer down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting it out of your system. I want to thank that lady is evil, 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 evil. But did y'all know that not only did they boo her, not only are they not rocking with Letitia James. Listen, it's a movement. I know a lot of y'all don't believe it. Eric Daniels don't believe it. Eric Daniels don't believe it. He don't believe that it's a movement. It's a real movement across the entire United States of America. 
it's a movement. Did y'all know that they actually going going after and trying to find the people that booed her? From the fire department. They're going after the people that, how many of y'all want to bet that she's probably the one that's instituting this as far as going after these firefighters? They're going after and searching for the people that booed Letitia James at the speech. Meanwhile, the FDNY is still searching for those rowdy firefighters who booed New York Attorney General Letitia James at a department promotion event last week. You'll remember this. Oh, Brian Yanis live in New York City with more. Still talking about this, Brian. Sandra, good morning. Well, the FDNY is urging firefighters to turn themselves in, insisting they are, quote, not hunting anyone down, but they are looking into those who they say clearly broke department regulations when they booed AG Letitia James and started chanting former President Donald Trump's name at a promotion ceremony last week at a Brooklyn church. Yes. Okay, I'm confused, honestly, and I didn't know that we lived in, in China or Russia. I am confused. What, what department law, speech, whatever, recommendation or whatever says that you can't boo in a church for somebody that you don't care? I'm <laughs> and chant Trump. I can I cannot believe that we live in, in this place. I can't believe it. Turn yourself in. We're searching for the fired fighters that actually booed Letitia James. What? So the police department is hunting is hunting firefighters for booing Letitia James. And they are actively spending time chasing these guys down. They are actually spending time chasing down firefighters for booing Resfusia. Y'all got me scared. I'm so afraid to say anything at this point. Yesterday, FDNY Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh went back to that church and apologized. I am sorry about the way that we acted. We disappointed our friends who are here, our family who is here, and we disappointed this church that has given us so much over the years. The FDNY tells Fox about its investigation into its members, quote, it has nothing to do with politics. It's about professionalism at an official event held in a house of worship. While some argue the firefighters were within their First Amendment rights, FDNY bosses are apparently furious over what they deemed as unacceptable behavior oh, by FDNY on. members Thursday. First, um, simmer down. A Kavanaugh. And Chief Hodgins for... Sound like it's everybody in there. Sound like it's everybody in there. <clears throat> you telling me. You telling me. That they can arrest them for decorum? <sighs> Listen, man. It's getting worse every day. Every day that y'all continue to embrace this PC culture where people can't have freedom of speech. They can't say what they want to say. <clears throat> they can't even boo no more. Now you can lose your job and get arrested. <sighs> and they actually spending time and resources on this. They're spending time and resources on this. Shout out to Respucia. Uh, let me, let me, <laughs> look at her. Look at her. Let me read some of these super chats and then we're going to continue over with the show. We got to get over to the stuff that really matters, y'all. Um, Umar will say booing the sister is racist. Peace and pan Africanism. Peace and pan Africanism. Peace and pan Africanism. I want you to understand, understand, and overstand that this is racist towards our sister. Now, she don't necessarily have to have that hair because I would love to have her have that natural hair so that she can hit up on King Kong because the minute that you hit on King Kong consciousness, I will definitely be in your city. Let me say it again. Hit the cash app. Hit the cash app. Hit the cash app. King Kong consciousness will definitely be down to politic, politicize, and political on all of our sisters as long as they willing to not be able to acquiesce over to these white 
Eastern European snow bunnies, these slave masters that decided to colonize and then ostracize our sister's black hair that we're going to blame on black men for not making sure that our sisters feel comfortable enough to wear the natural hair. Hit the cash app. Hit the cash app. Hit the cash app for the FDMG ABCD EFG school of donation. Frederick, Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy that ain't never opened in the last 15 years. Hit the cash app, ladies and gentlemen. I will be in your city November 15th, November 16th, and November 17th, and November 16th, November 17th, and November 18th in order to make sure that the most prolific black speaker since Malcolm, Martin, and Frederick is in your city to help you understand how we need to get our people together. Hit the cash app. Uh, shout out to Trey D. <laughs> understand, understand, and overstand. My celestial sisters. Uh, Brittany B says, nope, call your bro back. I need to know what big back activities are. <laughs> Ooh. Y'all ain't got the likes up yet. This is the best morning show on earth. Amen on one. Amen. Rasputia had donuts on a stick. <laughs> oh, I ain't never ever seen donuts on a stick. Oh my God. This is so stupid. <laughs> Derek Burke says the millionaire morning show is a show I never knew I needed. I wanted not to like you. Why would you not want to like the anti from antidangles.com? I wanted to not like you, but you keep it real and have changed the way I view things I rock with you. Let me get a round of applause for you. <laughs> Shout out to the Chasers. Make sure y'all hit the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. If you're looking to rock out with a group of people that's going in the direction, you're going to blah, blah, blah. Yes. Ooh, yes. Uh, Luke Hazley, 20 over 50. I like that. I appreciate your relationship with your brother. We need to see that more in society. And as dirty as politics is, a delicate, feminine woman will not expose herself or her family to that dysfunction. I 100% agree with you. Thank you, Luke Hazley, 20 over 50. I love that. What does that 20 over 50 mean? Jacquel is in the building, says Trump won 91 criminal charges. Uh, what, what up, though, Anton? Shout out to my dog, Jacquel. Thank you for supporting the platform. Brittany B says, one thing you don't do is mess with the... Listen, you don't mess with the New York Police Department or the firefighters. You don't mess with the Always Remember crew that saved you during 9-11 during a time when it was... I mean, I not say that part. Brittany almost went off the deep end. Almost went off the deep end. Let's get to it. So we got nothing to do except for get to the money. Listen, before we get over into this other stuff... Before we get over into the other stuff, we got to make sure that we help y'all to understand what's going on at the border. Now, it's not just migrants that you got to worry about, okay? We also have, okay, so let me bring y'all in and up to speed. So you remember the speech where Biden gave with the State of the Union that we actually reviewed last week? I think it was like on a Thursday or a Friday or something like that. Remember that? We did the state, it was a Friday. He did the State of the Union on Thursday night. We reviewed it on Friday and Biden was like, Oh my, and listen guys, we're putting more money at the border. We have state-of-the-art technology to keep fentanyl and all of these other drugs that the cartels continue to bring over into the United States of America. And he stumbled a little bit and then he brought himself back and he said, all of this equipment is absolutely saving lives. Well, let me bring you up to speed of how that equipment works and what it's doing at the border, okay? Now to the latest on the fentanyl crisis at the U.S. southern border. Officials there using new technology to detect the deadly drug crossing over in cars and trucks. But NBC News has learned millions of dollars in scanners paid for by taxpayers are just sitting in warehouses. Our Julia Ainsley speaking with the head of Customs and Border Protection about why those potentially life-saving devices are still seating unused. Wait, 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 wait. So somebody in the chat said, what did Cam Cam do now? Y'all didn't know that Cam Cam was the border czar? Yeah, Cam Cam is the border czar, meaning that she is the person that was tasked by the Biden administration to oversee and make sure that our borders are secure. 
That's why she was standing up and clapping so hard. Every time Biden said a word at the State of the Union. Tonight, we're on the front lines of the fentanyl crisis. Nogales, Arizona. Half of all fentanyl seized coming in from Mexico is stopped here. But critics say the Biden administration is not doing enough. With fentanyl overdoses now the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45. Acting CBP. Whoa, 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 I didn't know that. Did y'all know that fentanyl is the leading cause of death for people aged 18 to 45? Did she say that right? The leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 45. Did y'all know that? I did not know that. Did y'all know that according to what NBC is saying, they, say, they said that the Fenty is the leading cause of death, not car crashes, not uh, busting it open. I did not know that. I just found that out. I just discovered that Fenty is the number one cause of death for people ages 18 through 45. Wow, that's new to me. That's crazy. Acting CBP Commissioner Troy Miller tells us virtually all fentanyl is brought across in vehicles. It's driven by men, women, young, old, U.S. citizens, Mexican citizens. And he tells us border agents have begun using a new technology to identify fentanyl hidden in vehicles. We watch as officers first question drivers and inspect cars. Then they may be referred for a scan. This is new technology that's been installed to x-ray cars that officers suspect might be carrying narcotics. It's been installed here in Nogales because it's considered the ground zero for fentanyl trafficking. But less than 5% of personal vehicles and 20% of commercial vehicles coming into the U.S. are actually scanned. With more new technology, Miller wants to bring those numbers up to 40% of cars and 70% of commercial trucks, but not for another two years. Why not scan every vehicle through an x-ray? We see a million people crossing our border uh, every single day. If we tried to scan every single shipment and person coming into this country, we would shut down legitimate trade and travel. And tonight we... And so what, did that, what does that mean? Did you hear what he said? They only scan less than 5% of cars, right? Less than. We don't know exactly what that number is, but it's definitely less than that, right? And he basically said, this is what they're telling y'all. If what's more important to us is not drugs that's coming into this country, because <laughs> if we just want to be honest, we don't know who's really benefiting from this, from this or whatever, right? Who's, who's getting their gr palms greased? They're not interested in stopping it. They're interesting, interested in slowing it down because what's more important than that is that we keep this money flowing back and forth across the border. That's what he said, man, told 83. Can't mess up the money. Look, look, when it comes down to it, if you got enough money, you got enough leverage, and you can get away with more things. The more money you make, the more hand up, listen, every day that I go out, I'm going to give it to you on a microscopic scale. I make sure that I have a bunch of fives. Every day, every single day, right? This is my, my method of currency and cash, every day. This is all I carry every day, just a bunch of fives, whole bunch of them, new. Every day I go to the bank and I get about $250 in fives. It's a whole bunch of fives, they all stuck together, a bunch of new fives, not hundreds, not tens, not fifties, this is all fives. I just got a whole lot of fives every day. I get about $250 in fives. Some of it is to help because I know that I'm going to pass people that are homeless or whatever that depend on me to take a certain way to get here. And so I make sure that I give it out to the people and I give it to fives. I don't even carry singles anymore. I carry fives. 
But the other way is because I know that it's important for me to make sure that I take care of the people that make sure that they give me the insight of what's going on. It's kickback. It's kickback society. Whether you go to the casino, whether I go over to the valet, people in my building, whatever, I make sure that across the board, I'm giving them 5, 10, 15, whatever, depending on what their position is, depending on where I find them, depending on who they are, I make sure that I take care of everybody around me on a regular basis because they are the ones that give me the insight of what's happening every single day. I know who's coming in. I know who's going out. I know what this, what's happening over there, what, what's happening over there. Somebody said why fives in time because it's easier for me to determine what amount that somebody needs. So I might give somebody 20. I might give somebody 10. But if I just have a bunch of fives, then I can always break it down much easier, right? But my point is that a lot of people don't tip, but a lot of people are not familiar with what's happening around them because they don't understand the importance of kickbacks. Kickbacks is basically making sure that you give a little extra and you take care of the people that's around you because they give you the best insight and they let you know everything that's going on. My point is this. As long as you take care of people, you are always familiar with what's going on around you. It always comes back down to the money. Always. The federal government, <clears throat> the people at the border, is basically saying there is always something. It's always going to be money over everything. We're not looking to shut down the border. We're looking to make sure that this commerce continue. But in the meantime, we'll also do a little bit more to make sure that we can protect y'all because it's not about American lives. We know for a fact <clears throat> that the majority of people, that's 18 through 45, are dying from fentanyl. But we're not worried about that as much as we worried about this money continuing to come forth because we got industries that's interdependent on this. It's, it's wheels that got to be greased, right? Everything comes back down to the money. Everything. You can fix 99% of the problems that's all around you when you get a little bit of bread and you know how to util utilize it correctly. We've learned millions of dollars of taxpayer-purchased fentanyl scanners are sitting in warehouses, unused. We need approximately $300 million for civil works to actually put the technology in the ground. And this money they don't even have it to put it in the ground. Most of the scanners that they say that they got, it's not even in use. It's not even in use. <clears throat> They want an extra $300 million just to even be able to install the scanners that they got that's continuing to go through all of this, all of this border stuff. <clears throat> they spend a bunch of money on equipment. I, I wonder how, who made the money on that one. Spend a bunch of money on equipment, don't even have the ability to put it in the ground. But we got $60 billion to make sure that we send over to Ukraine though, right? For, for a one-time quarterly payment. You've already spent, but it's sitting there. Is that frustrating for you? Very frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. Buddy, this but is above your pay grade. But that's not stopping some companies from developing the next generation of AI technology to detect fentanyl and vehicles at the border. There's international trade and travel. Kevin McAleenan leads one of those companies, Pangeum. He was former acting secretary of DHS, and before that, he once stood in Miller's shoes, running CBP during the Trump administration. Vast, vast majority of trade crossing the border is, is lawful. Uh, over 98% has no violations of any U.S laws. So they're really looking for the proverbial needle in the haystack. And so what AI can do is tell them if this image that the officer is now about to review meets what's supposed to be in that container. Is it, is, did the trader say it's an empty container? Well, that image should say that and the, and the algorithm can help detect that. Knowing what you know now about fentanyl, would you have made any decisions differently when you were the policymaker in charge? So we, we did see the increase coming. Uh, the, the efforts we undertook in, in 18 uh, affected and, and reduced overdoses in 19. But I, I would have really made an emphasis point about staying on top of this and staying in front of it. But in Tucson. Boy, you, try, you got paid. Stop it. Stop it. You got that bag. Marisa Guerrero is demanding authorities do much more. Every year, enough fentanyl is trafficked into the U.S. to kill every American. I think the border needs to be closed, to be honest with you, because we're a super highway. I mean, look how close you saw how close today that we are. Um, and they're just pouring in. This is 
I believe our last picture together. Guerrero lost her son Jacob four years ago when cocaine he ingested was secretly laced with fentanyl. She says Jacob was athletic, a free spirit, and always ready to help his friends. And he was a cokehead. Add that part in too. And he was and he was doing coke with his free spirited butt. Listen, now more than ever. Yo, they lacing the trees, the, the street junk that y'all got, whatever it is that you taking, Molly Perkins said all of that, man, horse tranquilizer and everything. Horse tranquilizer and everything. Y'all better be careful out here, man. Seriously, if there's anything that y'all is at any point in, in time that y'all should have been more careful about what you putting into your body, look, we have to be careful about the food that we even eat now. We can't even go to the grocery store without pesticides being in it, extra preservatives, extra sugar, all of this stuff. If you don't, if you think that the food, the regular food that we taking in is going to kill you, what you think that they're going to do with the drugs that you're taking in, that you're getting on the streets? I'm telling you. Look, now is not the time to be a fiend. Now is not the time to be a fiend. It's not the time to try it. It's not the time to try to figure it out. I'm telling you, it's our regular food we got to try to figure out on how to be careful with it. What you think is going to happen when they're dealing with the stuff that you're putting in that's not for, that's foreign to your body? telling you bro california construction of a border fence designed to keep people from climbing over it is nearly complete in san diego it's more than 30 feet tall and has an awning on the top as you can see that hangs over onto the mexican side the surge of illegal crossings is overwhelming the country axios reporting the u.s projects more than eight million asylum seekers will be living here by the end of september a 167 percent spike that's in five years. Jorge Ventura joining us now with the latest on what officials at the border are telling you and also the specifics of this new wall. Yeah, Marty, right now federal officials on the San Diego border are still building that new border barrier between Tijuana and San Diego in an area known as Friendship Park. If you take a look at the top of that fence, you'll see a new metal device kind of shaped like a comma with a pointy end hanging over the Mexican side. Now, at this time, this is still a prototype that is in works in the San Diego sector that is seeing a surge in illegal crossings. But if it does manage to deter migrants from hopping over that wall, eventually those metal tops will be installed in other sections along the southern border. But migrant advocates warning that even with this new wall design, migrants will still find a way around it. We continue to see an increase of people that are falling from the border wall and uh, seeking medical treatment. In this case, if they fall onto the Mexican side, then we won't have an accounting for how dangerous this new feature might be. Now, incidents of people falling over the wall are common in San Diego. Just this past weekend, Border Patrol agents and San Diego Fire Rescue responded to 10 injured migrants, including children who fell while trying to climb a 30-foot fence. And so far, Marnie, four people have died in attempts of getting over that border wall in that tent in the Tijuana, San Diego area. And last year, that number was up to 28, Marnie. All right. Jorge so it's Ventura. actually doing his job. So the border wall is actually doing his job and preventing people from coming over to the border. Maybe the new design will work for a little bit until we can figure something out or until they figure something out as far as, you know, actually re-engineering how they're going to get over here because apparently they're just driving over and they're just walking over anyway based off of what's happening on TikTok. But that's what's happening at the border, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read some of these super chats, and then we're going to continue to rock out with y'all. Uh, knowledge is real says they are running pilots to see if they can get away with it locking people up for freedom of speech or anything constitutional no one says anything or saying it will spread to other states well, we already know that that's gonna happen we already know what that's gonna happen performance chip says snow puppies and snow bunnies shout out to performance chip william livingston says it is hard for people to use money as a tool we need to stay from the love we need to stay from the love of it our government is drunk off of money. No, our government is drunk off of power. Power. Shout out to Huang Jiap. <laughs> Huang Jiap. Huang Jiap. We appreciate you. Thank you for holding us down. You don't even say nothing. You just sent that 50. You just said, let me send you this Fenty. It's Fenty, Fenty, Fenty. 
Shout out to Huang Jiap for holding me down. I appreciate you. It does not go unnoticed. Every single person that contributes and hold me down, I absolutely want to make sure that I add value into your life. Let's continue over with the show. So, the latest jobs report, because I got two more things that I want to share with you guys. First, I want to go over the jobs report and then how that's affecting people and whether or not they actually are seeing a better experience as far as their living, their ability to be able to survive and feed themselves. And then I want to go over to quitting your job, specifically to become a content creator, because it's a girl that said this. Uh, but let's just talk about the latest jobs report. Uh, maybe we can give Biden a little bit of credit of what's happening as far as keeping the economy humming. Huh? As President Biden hits the campaign trail after last night's State of the Union, the Labor Department reported today that the economy added 275,000 new jobs last month, exceeding economists' expectations. The unemployment rate did tick up a bit to 3.9 percent. NBC News business and data correspondent Brian Chung joins me now. Brian, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Happy Friday. So tell us what this February jobs report tells us about the state of the economy right now. Well, I mean, Kristen, you heard it yesterday as well from President Biden. The landing is and will be soft, referring to economists' expectations over a year ago that we would have been in a recession. You don't see that in the jobs numbers, which was corroborated by the numbers that we got this morning, showing 275,000 jobs added in the month of February. Check this out. Economists had only expected about 200,000 for the month, so above expectations. And yes, there are a little, a little bit of nuance. They revised down the December and January figures, and the unemployment rate did take up to 3.9 percent. But we've remained below a 4% unemployment rate for the entirety of this chart that I'm showing you and even beyond. Now, where did we see the job gains in the month? We saw it in these categories, leisure and hospitality and healthcare. Interestingly, these are blue collar jobs. In the white collar jobs, I want to highlight information and professional and business services, which added in aggregate only 11,000 jobs. We've been hearing of some tech layoffs in the past few mm -hmm. months. So these are threads we're going to have to watch in the months to come, Kristen. But overall, this jobs market looking very strong. Yeah, we so they're basically telling you that, hey, guys, jobs are plentiful. We're adding positions. Look Now, look at the positions that they added jobs in. <laughs> the most, well, not the most, but first of all, leisure and hospitality. You know what leisure and hospitality is? A lot of times those are temporary jobs. Uh, you can get a job at a hotel, restaurants. Uh, massage parlors, leisure and hospitality. Yeah, those don't pay a whole lot. Uh, healthcare. Healthcare is good. Healthcare is absolutely good. Uh, information and technology, eh, that's where the money is. That's where the money is. Information and technology is where the money is. And that's the least amount of jobs. Professional and business services, that's kind of like a catch-all, okay? It's kind of like a catch-all for everything else that they, can't, that they can't tell you what's going on in, all right? So now, now that we know exactly what these jobs are or that the jobs report has come out and they're saying that they added 275,000 new jobs, uh, let's talk about where some of these jobs are going. If you are on social media, chances are you've seen these videos all over your For You page. I'm pretty sure I'm getting laid off today. Job cuts, no matter the industry, can be found all over the headlines. So, to avoid being just another one of the more than 160,000 layoffs this year alone, Gen Z and millennials found a little hack, calling it quits on the private sector and going public. Many looking to lock down government jobs for security. Public Hold on, let me let me say this real quick before I well I get to that after this one. Service was something I always wanted to do besides the benefits, but also one of the reasons is because you were not going to get laid off versus private sector. Seventy-seven percent of the class of 2024 say they're more likely to apply to a job that promises stability, and that's what a government job offers. We so everybody now is becoming dependent on the government to give them a job so that they can have a level of stability. Also, what they're not also telling you is that most of the time they also get these jobs because they have a whole lot of student loans. And then what they do is if they work there on a government repayment plan or income-based repayment plan, then they can get their student loans forgiven if they worked there for 10 years, 10 years. 
So when these people get these jobs, they automatically try to go into the government, which is basically, basically us, our tax dollars, the government is getting bigger and we hiring more workers and inflation is going up because it costs more in order to do business. You don't actually have real money that's going into the roles and, and the economy is not necessarily growing. They're going into jobs that basically the taxpayers are paying for so that they can get their student loans uh, forgiven and they can have a level of stability. You need to grow small businesses. You need to grow private sector jobs. You need to grow uh, jobs in industries that then create higher paying jobs. Encouraging more entrepreneurship. And encouraging more growth. Encouraging uh, new companies, IPOs. You know what an IPO is, an initial public offering? That means it's a private company that's going public. Sort of like when Google went public, when Facebook went public, when Apple went public, all of these companies go public, Microsoft go public. When companies go public and then other investors outside of institutional investors or, or, or uh, seed funding have the opportunity to invest in these businesses that allow for them to grow, that's what makes an economy great. That's what makes an economy great. When you can grow private sector jobs, not public jobs, that is dependent on taxpayers to continue to fund it, that's when you then start to generate way more healthy jobs because it is a, it is a false narrative to think that the economy is still doing well when everybody got to get three or four jobs and it's being, being, being paid for by taxpayers, okay? We have to have a government. If we don't, our society is in trouble and our democracy as well. So it's not that your jobs are forever necessarily, but certainly the organization is there. Salaried workers in the public sector hold their jobs for three more years on average than in private. And the younger generation is beginning to notice. Hashtag government jobs on TikTok has more than 23 million views. We need to start applying to jobs with the federal government. On a popular career site for college kids, federal jobs receive twice as many applications. The paycheck is probably smaller. On average, federal workers earned about 22% less than private sector workers with similar roles. So they're willing to forego making more money in order to have more stability and have better benefits. They're willing to forego making more money because you, you on average, they pay 22% less in order to have more stability and better benefits, okay? But for many, the benefits are the selling point. Good health insurance, retiring early with a pension. Plus, after a decade, student loans are wiped clean for many. That's a perk nearly 70% say will influence their decisions. And of course, there's the work-life balance. You do your job nine to five, and then you can enjoy your life after work and do what you want to do. But right now, less than 8% of federal workers are younger than 30, and nearly half are over 50. The challenge, though, is that the leaders in government don't often prioritize creating the opportunities for young people ensuring that that the managers know how to manage uh, Gen Z and millennials and and making sure the process itself is not overly onerous. So Mayo says the long process can be a big turnoff. I tell them that it's going to take a minute. And when they say, what do you mean a minute? I'm like five to six months. They always got some zesty person as a part of the diversity, equity and inclusion or some advocacy group. Always talk that got their eyebrows arched and their makeup done. Always sitting here. Get, I don't even want to see this part of the show. Uh, let me move on to the next video real quickly. I don't want to see that. Uh, this is a PBS report where they were breaking, about, breaking down. Despite how many jobs that was being added and all of this other type of stuff, why Americans are feeling unhappy about the economy despite, despite the indication that we're improving, improving from a government perspective. Today's latest jobs report is proof again of a labor market that has been resilient and often stronger than expected. That was part of President Biden's message during his State of the Union last night as well. But many Americans don't feel the economy is strong overall or helping them or their families. 
A number of polls have shown this, including one from the New York Times this week that found 51 percent of Americans believe the country's economic conditions are poor right now. So why the disconnect? Economics correspondent Paul Salman explains. I think if you talk to average person on the street, they're going to say that the economy is not doing well. Um, and I tend to agree. Seth Reed is an ESL teacher in Northern Virginia. I'm doing fine, but still, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. How many advice do you have on the docket today? Alyssa Gonzalez co-owns the Treehouse Cyclery in Denver. I've kind of accepted more of like a real... Uh, she kind of cute, though, on a low. Are those her real eyes? Co-owner of the Treehouse Cyclery. She got that bull ring in her nose, though. <laughs> she got that bull ring in her nose, though. That's a red flag. But she, she kind of cute, though, on the low. She got that uh, weird look that, that, I don't know. She got that, I'm a vampire. The blood, the blood. But she kind of she, she cute. Treehouse Cyclery. Let's pull that up. Give me a second. Let's go into the treehouse and see if there's anything there. I just want to see what's happening in the treehouse cyclery. A woman owned and operated community focused bike shop in Denver, Colorado. All right. Close on Sunday and Monday. Um, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And see, this is why y'all got to be careful. See, she ain't checking for me. She ain't checking for me. Treehouse Cyclery is piled to be queer and woman-owned, Asian-Hispanic-owned, Locally owned and operated. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. When I seen that bull ring and them eyes, I was thinking to myself, eh, that's why I be careful. That's why I be doing my research. I got to know who y'all giving y'all money to, and then you can make a decision then. Listen, you can't trick me. So you all, she went with all of the diversity and inclusion. That's her. Ah, look, she got her pronouns up. She literally got her pronouns up. She, her. Yeah, that's a wrap, guys. That's a waste. That's a that's a good old waste. I don't even know what that is. That's a waste. Oh well. It went off immediately. I just started figuring it out like, ah, eh, look a little different, but oh, well, I hope her business does well. Regardless, it doesn't mean that you don't deserve to be able to make a living. Uh, but I was, you know, me, I, I get a little, I'll be like, dang, she kind of cute. Let me check her out. And she'd be like, make sure you get my pronouns right. All right. All right. Do your thing then, baby girl. Shout out to Elisa, Elisa Gonzalez view of the world where things aren't going to get I think she is cute. I think she is cute. Nonprofit executive Eric Hicks was the most succinct. I don't feel great. But how can people feel so bad and even tell pollsters just that if the economy has been doing so well? Low unemployment. I'm weird now. I got catfished. Is that a homie? That ain't all. Man, stop it, bro. Don't don't y'all do that to me. I will cut this whole show off. That is not a, that's not a homie, bro. That's a girl. I've kind of accepted more of like a realistic view of the world. Man, that's a girl, bro. Get out of here. I'm not about to sit here and play no games with y'all. That's a whole woman. That's a woman. Just because they got pronouns don't mean that they not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, get on out of here, man. Y'all better get out of here trying to act like I, dog, we not going to play this game.
I did check. Forget y'all. I don't like y'all. I, I can't stand the chat right now. Hey, can we get the chat turned off real quick? <laughs> y'all about to make me turn my chat off. You want me to turn the chat off? Y'all want to get back to the economy or y'all want to continue to play games trying to figure out whether or not it is or it is not? It is a woman. Y'all just don't know. That's a woman. Where things aren't going to get better. Nonprofit executive Eric Hicks was the most succinct. I don't feel great. But how can people feel so bad and even tell pollsters just that if the economy has been doing so well? Low unemployment, inflation easing. I publish these social media videos every day, TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. And what was interesting Kyla about Scanlon is a writer, social media personality, and demystifier of economics. I was getting like hundreds of comments a day telling me how people were perceiving the economy. Because I would make a video being like, inflation is going down, like the labor market's okay. And people were like, no, I feel really bad. The word she coined to describe what she was hearing, vibe session. The vibe session is this idea of a disconnect between consumer sentiment and economic data and why people feel bad about the economy despite the economic metrics telling them that the economy is, is doing okay. In fact, the consumer sentiment index has noticeably improved, says economist Justin Wolfers. People seem to be a little bit more willing to admit that, in fact, that long nightmare of the post-pandemic recession and, and hard times and recovery so. behind us. And people seem a little more willing to admit that things are doing okay. But many Americans say they remain- I want to go back to the, to the other person, hold on. Double what they were pre-COVID. Alyssa Gonzalez now looks for cheaper items. A lot more canned foods, box foods, um, just like 12 pack of ramen noodles because it gets the job done. That's a whole woman, boy. Get on out of here. Um, just like 12 pack of ramen noodles because it gets the job done. And Man, whatever, bro. I ain't thinking about y'all. The fact of the matter is, yeah, that's a woman, bro. Get out of my, get out of my jet. The fact of the matter is we're going back to the core of what the problem is. And the problem is that people don't feel as though their dollars are stretching far enough and they're still suffering. All right. So. <laughs> Y'all so extra. I don't like y'all. Not everybody is a dude. No, everybody is not a dude. <laughs> oh, hold on. Before I read the super chats, let me show y'all something. Let me tell y'all what I deal with on a daily basis, all right? I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Um... Let's do this. All right. So we'll go over to my email. This is the email that I just got. All right. This is from YouTube. Hey, Anton Daniels. This is to notify you that we have received a privacy complaint from an individual regarding your content. All right. Before we get over to the next one, I want to tell you all what I deal with on a regular basis. And then they send me the two links to the description. And then it's basically saying we will give you an opportunity to remove or edit the private information uh, that might be present within the content reported. This notification informs you that another user has raised privacy concerns about your content. However, it will not automatically result in the video being restricted and no associated pen penalty has been applied to your video at this time. So basically they're giving me 48 hours after this notice, and then they're going to review the violation of the privacy guidelines, we'd like to give you the opportunity to remove or, pri remove or edit the private information that might, that might, keyword might, be present within the content. Um, after 48 hours of the notice, they're going to review the complaint for privacy violations and consider restricting the content, right? So basically they're saying that, you know, the content based off of these two videos that a, that a user reported uh, could be privacy and they want to possibly restrict the content. So nothing would happen, right? But this is what I deal with on a regular basis, okay? Uh, please note that you may not need to remove the content entirely in order to resolve the issue. YouTube offers a premium custom blurring tool which allows you to blur anything in your video, including individuals and or information. For, for more information on blurring the feature, whatever, blah, 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 blah. They're committed to protecting users. Now, 
Do you want to know? No, YouTube is not hating. YouTube is not hating. I want to show y'all the whole context. Y'all want to know what the video is? It's this video. So these two videos down here, right? This is the video that I did on a live stream the week before, the win not this last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that. This is the live stream video, and then this is one of the clips from the video. In the video, for those of you that seen this, this guy right here came up on the platform, right? When, we came, when he came up on the platform, Anton, I rock with you. I want to call into the show voluntarily for him to call into the show, right? Came up on the platform, said, Anton, I want to tell my story about my divorce story and how I left my wife and all of that. I said, okay. I left him off camera. And then I said to him, Then I talked to him, and let me tell you, hold on, listen, so y'all can't hear the video, but essentially what happened was he was off camera, right, and then eventually I said, hey, do you want to be on camera? Do you want to be on camera? He called into the show, and I asked him, I said, do you want to be on camera? Look, so off. Do you want to be on camera? You called into the show. Nobody has to be on camera. This is up to you. He said, yeah, man, I want to be on camera. Bring me up. Then he start volunteering all of this information that then turned into a whole show. Now he must be getting backlash or whatever it is that he's dealing with. And so now, instead of reaching out to me, because people could reach out to me, and he was a liar, instead of reaching out to me and saying, hey, man, uh, I exposed too much of my information or I told too many stories, I don't, you know what I'm saying, can you edit that part out or whatever like that? Because he consented. And so, you know, you can file for whatever you want because 99.9% .9 of the time they're going to say no. Instead of him coming up and saying, hey, man, uh, I said, you know, I was being crazy on the interview and all of this other type of stuff. I want to remove it. Instead of him doing that, you know what he did? He basically filed a privacy complaint with YouTube this morning. And he, so, you know, they're going to go in and they're going to review it. There was no information, no addresses, no nothing, no cities, no none of that that was, that was talked about. And so he volunteered to be on the live stream. And so instead of him contacting me, because, you know, I don't care. I ain't tripping about that. It ain't, it ain't that deep. If you would have contacted me and said, yeah, fam, um, yeah, fam, can you do this for me or whatever? But you know what? You know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to still take it down. You know why I'm going to take it down? Not that I have to. Not that I feel like, um, you know, that anything that, that I have to or anything will happen. It's like I said, I deal with this type of stuff all the time as a, as a huge content creator. And, and you know, to be honest with you, these type of people tend to start messing it up for everybody else. When I tell people, hey, you can call in, you don't have to be on camera, it's up to you and all of this. You know what I'm saying? When I say that on a regular basis and then I extend my platform in order to be able to have additional conversations, I do that because I want people to participate with the show. I want people to participate with the show. I asked them, hey, do you want to be on camera or don't you? They say, yeah, man, bring me up. Oh, okay, cool. But see, it messes it up for everybody else because then what will happen is I'll stop taking callers. Or have you noticed that most other content creators that get to a certain size, they don't, they don't take calls? They don't take calls at all. 
They just completely remove themselves from it, and they just do their show, and then they interact with the chat, and then they just keep going about their way. But, but, um, what I am going to do is just because I'm a nice person, because I don't want to see nobody crash out even if they did it voluntarily themselves, because I'm a nice person, Because nothing is going to happen. Worst case scenario, they say, oh, man, he was just getting too graphic. They're going to restrict the content. Nothing was, was, was crazy. Only because I actually care about the people, even though he did not reach out to me, even though he never contacted me and say, Anton, hey, fam, can you, whatever. I'm going to just do it just because off the strength because I'm just a nice person. But do you see how one bad apple can ruin a whole bunch? Do you see how one bad apple can ruin the whole bunch because people don't know how to police themselves or because they want to say whatever they want to say, but then they didn't realize it was going to go viral, and now, now, they want to move differently. Because he thought that, yeah, you're right, Mr. Overwit. he thought that I was going to side with him instead of holding him accountable. And see, then when I removed the video, then it, it, it kind of paints a picture like Anton only get on women. No, I get on everybody. I get on everybody. And he was foul. It's not the thumbnail pick because it's both videos. It's the fact that he's in a live stream and it's that he's actually in the other video divulging too much information. So, you know. It is what it is. It's, it's, it's stupid. It's dumb that I got to deal with this nonsense. It, I, it ain't even that big of a deal. Like I said, I'm going I'm to remove it just because I'm a nice person. But it's silly. It's silly that we got to deal with this. Grown men that come on here and throw themselves under the bus and then they want to sit here and act like they're a victim. Can't stand that junk, bro. Can't st but... We're not going to change it up. We're going to keep doing what we do. If I ever see that guy again, he's just completely going to be banned from the platform. Don't call me for no coaching call. Don't call me or none of that. We're going to research, find out if – I just don't want to be bothered, man. I ain't got time for that. Anyways, let's continue over with the show. I'm going to read a couple of Super Chats, and then we're going to go from there. Um, Charles Pride is in the building says, hopefully everyone is having a blessed day. Shout out to Charles Pride. I appreciate you, big dog. Uh, Christina MS says, AD, please talk about Biden taking away the 1099 independent contractor jobs. Yeah, I'll read into that. I'll deep dive into that. Let me put that on my notes. I got you. Absolutely. I'll add that into the show. <laughs> Uh, Antonio Watkins says, Northern California agenda. Thank you, Antonio Watkins. Prince Elian says, the Fed's plan is to kill the private sector and federalize the workforce. They've been slowly indoctrinating our society for decades and want to, ex to want and accept it. Shout out to you, my friend. I appreciate you. And you know what else is, is uh, ignorant? So I'm going to take down the one video and then I'm going to edit out the other video, the, the actual live stream. But one of the reasons why it's, it's, it aggravates me is because it also messes up the chat replay. So when I edit it through YouTube and take his part out in the live stream, it then removes the chat replay. It disables the chat replay automatically. And so I can't, when you go back to restream the live stream, when it takes him out, it also removes out the entire chat replay for the entire video. Listen, if y'all don't want to, if y'all don't want to take over or be responsible for what you say, then don't call in. Don't call in and have a conversation about something that you don't want to be responsible for. You a grown man. That's how I know he messed up his, his, his family in the first place. Uh, the Fed's plan is to kill the private sector and federalize the workforce. They've been slowly indoctrinating our society for decades to want and accept it. Shout out to Prince Elian. I appreciate you, Prince Elian, for holding me down. Optimus Prime says, uh, the skepticon. No, 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 no. no. Um, Jeremy H says, government jobs take about a year to respond. Most require a master's to start at the bottom, and they'll only offer it if me and my military bros pass it up. Yeah, that's true. 
That is true. Zach says she, him pronouns. <laughs> Class E says... Class E says, F that dude for abusing his system. As a fellow YouTuber, he should know better. He was messing it up for everyone. That's just stuff that we got to deal with, bro. But it's all right. We're going to be the bigger person. Dialect One says, that dude is a straight up sucker. I can't imagine what his wife was dealing with. Married to him, I'm disgusted. It's usually black men too wild. <laughs> Calling up here to get clout. Marcus X says, uh, Bart PD paying 123 to 202 base area uh, in the Bay Area right now. But ain't nobody trying to go over to the Bay Area. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Christopher J in the building says, Cornball's always ruining for everybody. I agree. Did you cover the Alex Jones on $1.5 billion? No, nah, I don't really talk about Alex Jones on this platform. Alex Jones got his own platform. We don't need to talk about all of that. All right, so let's continue. One last thing before we get up out of here. It's a content creator, and her name is, let me give her her credit, Heidi Rosario. She has a little over 1,000 subscribers. So if y'all go over there and check her out and then tell her that Anton from AntonDaniels.com sent you uh, and show her some love. I don't know her. I've never seen her before. She popped up on my algorithm, and I thought that the title of the video would be interesting. So this is the first time that I'm seeing it. Uh, again, her name is Heidi, H-E-I-D-Y, Rosario. If y'all want to go and check out her content, she look kind of cute on the low, though. What's up with all of these girls with these different color eyes? So anyways, she's basically saying, uh, the, the title of the video is that, watch this before you pursue content creation. Watch this before you, you quit your job and pursue content creation, all right? So we're going to go ahead and rock out with this. Make sure I hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your not notifications. Before you quit your job, please watch this video. Hey guys, my name is Heidi, and if there's one thing you should know about me is that I am a really high risk taker. I am in my 20s, I don't have a husband, I don't have kids, and I'm willing to risk it all because, quite frankly, I just don't have much to lose. Early last year, there was a Delulu trend where we were all encouraging each other to be a little more delusional in life. And as someone who's already delusional to begin with, I became even more delusional after listening to all these TikToks online and it's a big reason why I got off social media and this month actually marks five months off of TikTok and Instagram but that's another story for another time. She got so uh, discouraged at the stuff that they told her lying to her on TikTok and Instagram that she decided to completely click, quit the platforms for the next five months. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, I have a video on that as well. <sighs> but I became extra delusional and decided to quit my job exactly this time last year. I was a full-time server and had been promoted to become a bartender and started making more money. And so I saved some more cash and decided to quit my job to pursue content creation full-time because that was my ultimate dream since I was in high school. I saved up three months of expenses, which, like I said, really high risk takers. So three months for me was just enough and I decided to go full force on my business. I was very bullish and thought, if I just had more time, I can make this successful. I can make more videos, I can contact more people and find new clients so I can make content for them. I could be a freelancer and grow my influence. And I just was very, very optimistic, as I always am. But this time, it was just a little scarier because my life sort of depended on it. I still, I live with roommates and so I still have to pay my part of the rent. I still need to eat, I need to pay my bills. I still had loans to pay off and student loans to pay off. And I still had my bills, like they weren't going anywhere. It wasn't like I was totally debt free. I still had my car loan. And so quitting my job wasn't the best move financially. But I thought, like I said, if I just have more time to focus on my content that I could actually make this work. Let me say this. First, let me give her a round of applause. And I'm giving her a round of applause because she identified for two reasons. The first reason that I'm giving her a round of applause is because uh, she self-admitted that she was delusional. And I'm glad that she's saying this out loud because it's a lot of people that get delusional about what it is that we do here 
or it's not even just what we do as content creators. It's also um, being an entrepreneur. Because everybody tells everybody to just start a business without any additional context. And I think that everybody should have a business. But that's the reason why we break it down inside of the Patreon and the bag chasers as to the context behind why you should start a business. Not necessarily just to quit your job and start a business. It's funny because people still laugh at me for still holding on to my regular job, even though I am doing incredibly well. And everybody that's inside of the bag chasers know exactly how much I make per year. You know how much I generate per year. It's not even a secret. All of my receipts, my accounts. I even give y'all some clues and show y'all some of my accounts and stuff on the Millionaire Morning Show. All of my receipts, what I make, my 1099s, my 1040s, my brokerage accounts. You know what I make. You know what I do. You know what I generate. It's not a secret. But because I make so much, um, a lot of people think that, oh, man, you should be balling. Well, listen, if you understood and you knew what you was doing, and you would be in my position, but you're not. Okay? And so because I like to have multiple streams of income, eight right now, why wouldn't I keep that as long as I'm continuing to be successful? That's number one. The reason why I'm giving her some credit is that she self-admitted and she said um, that she was delusional. All right. The second reason why I'm giving her some credit is because she's failing forward and she's learning from her mistakes. And she's doing it early enough where it won't affect her and she won't suffer. So we all, when people fail, a lot of times it's not always a failure. It's just a learned lesson. And so I, I applaud her for being honest. I applaud her for being transparent. But I also applaud her for taking a risk uh, at a time where she won't be as affected and the, and the stakes is not as high because you didn't have people depending on you. You got a husband, you got kids, you got whatever, and you still being delusional. Because now she's learning the lessons, right? Failure is not a bad thing. Taking a risk is not a bad thing. But learning from it and then becoming better as a result of it is the blessing. And so I got to give her some credit. And I'm going to give her credit on the third thing of her being honest and transparent about her journey and not just selling people on a lie. I was exhausted. I was a bartender working at night and I was working on my content during the day, but I just felt like I just didn't want to keep doing this hustle life anymore. I just wanted to live out my dream. And I thought to myself, if I really need to find a job and if this doesn't work out, I can easily just go back and find a bartending job anywhere because they're always hiring. And, and the first few months I was bartending, I honestly was just trying to replenish my savings and just get back so on track. She was able to get back to, to her job um, after she failed as a content creator. And it looks like now she's starting to have some level of success because I'm reacting to her video. Um, as a content creator and make up for all of the mistakes financial mistakes I made when I had quit my job I also didn't have a fully funny emergency fund and as we all heard not having an emergency fund is an emergency and so I was really living off the edge here and I had a backup plan like if worse comes to worse I need to live with my mother or I need to ask my dad for money but I honestly don't want to do that I don't want to resort to having to rely on other people go home y'all i ain't even talking to her i'm talking to y'all in this video if you in your 20s go home you ain't got no husband you ain't got no kids you ain't got none of that go home bro you could take more risks you could have more support you get more insight again her name is heidi rosario go home Go home. Ain't nothing wrong with going home and pushing. I don't expect my daughter to, to leave my household. Listen, even when my daughter get married, I don't expect for them to have to do nothing. I don't expect for my daughter and her husband, when she eventually grows up and get married, for them to have to do anything. They can stay with me forever. They never, ever have to move out, ever. As a matter of fact, I'll probably gift them a place to live. Um, and, and pay for the wedding because that's just what fathers do. Uh, yeah, I'll gift her, you know, we'll gift her a place to live and pay for the wedding, whatever. You know, we, we always preparing and everything like that. But it's nothing wrong with staying home as long as possible to put yourself in the best position as possible. You do not have to be independent. You do not have to be independent. I don't know why y'all women want to struggle. 
I don't know why people want to struggle. I don't know why people want to struggle. Why do, you, why, why do y'all have to be independent or want to hit my butt? Go home. Go home. And as I'm getting older and thinking about my future, thinking about having a husband or having kids and building up my future, I really thought to myself, like, I can't just like have this traveler, backpacker, high risk taker mindset anymore. And I'm not saying that's like what every traveler or backpacker person is like. I'm just saying for me, like, I'm just so free spirited and so like, you know, like God will provide and like everything will be okay. And God's got some lessons. For although me. it's true, like I just value security so much more now after living a life of no security whatsoever. And so this year, like I feel like I just shifted into a brand new person because all I can think about is like, do I have a savings account? Do I have an emergency fund? Like, do I have an income coming in, like a steady income coming in every single week? And now I can't like I can't like quit my job without knowing like do I have another one lined up? And so my mindset has totally shifted because I no longer just want to be, I no longer feel the need to be delusional like that anymore. And yes, I still have my dreams and hopes of becoming a successful YouTuber and travel creator, but I'm she also trying to find peace and pretty sure accept the be. fact that the reality is, is that we still have to work and play and be a part of the system and work our way around it until we can provide for ourselves. Instead of like complaining about, I guess, our nine to fives or our current jobs, maybe find something that you still find enjoyable and you could wake up every day and go to work and enjoy it. And then also have another side hustle or business you are growing, but still enjoying both of them. And I think that's the key when you are someone who is embarking on the entrepreneurship journey. So I am currently at a new restaurant, Italian restaurant, bartending, and I do board, love baby. my job, but I started feeling the same way a few weeks ago like I did last year, and that's kind of what inspired me to create this video because I was working full-time, and I had that tiny little thought of like, mm, I really want to quit my job. I just had the itch. She came back. Instead of being there full time, I decided to cut back on the hours and be part time only because I know even if I work there part time, I could still afford to pay all of my bills. But I also was thinking about looking into sort of like the corporate world and see if I could find some sort of job in finance or accounting or some sort of businessy nine to five job. And I considered doing that because I have a degree in international business and I wanted to sort of use it to get more money now. She has a degree in international business where she's working in a restaurant and she's bartending. And there's nothing wrong with working in a restaurant and bartending. But I guess one of the things that I'm asking is just why do y'all go into these degree programs when you don't actually have a blueprint for how you want your life to be? Why, who who picks international business but don't actually go into international business whenever they graduate? I don't even know what international business, what does that do? What what is what is an international business degree? What does that leapfrog you into? Politics? Lesson number two, actually pick something that's gonna make you money when you go to college. Lesson number three, content creation is hard and you have to eat what you kill. See, everybody is selling you this narrative like, oh, man, you could just be a content creator. And that's the end of it. Man, listen, bro. I don't think that people realize that being a content creator is basically running your own business. And then also on top of that, you're competing against other people and you only eat what you kill. And so all of these lazy people or you want to do it when you want to and all of this stuff? Nah. Nope. Nope. Because you're going to compete with people like me that don't sleep. You're going to compete. Listen, you look at the cars and all of that stuff. Man, listen, you're going to compete with people like me that don't sleep. And it may not be what you think it is. It may not go the way that you think it's going to go. 
I'm just telling you. Every, and I ain't even just talking about content creation. I'm talking about life in general. People think that it's easy. Look, I've always encouraged people, do not quit your job. Let me say it again. So you, you remember all of them home, homeless people that we did in the beginning of the show? And it was Hollywood and all of that stuff. All of those people in the beginning of the show that was homeless. A lot of those people had a dream. And they ran out to L.A. Remember that little, the little big boy, the big bonded boy? <laughs> the big bonded boy that was singing in the school plays and he had all his meat on his, on his face and stuff like that. And when he got out there, he was all skinny and laying on the streets. He had dreams. That's why he went out to L.A. That's why he moved from, from the Midwest, East Coast, over to L.A. He went out there thinking that it was sweet and it ate him alive because everybody not built for that. Everybody not built for it. And so when I t what I tell people, and people get mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to tell you that. I did tell you on a Thursday. Do not quit your job. If it's that meaningful to you, then do your job in order to make sure that you survive and then also be able to lower your lifestyle and then do it after you get home. Instead of going out to party, instead of going out to the, to the bars, instead of spending time with friends that ain't adding no value into your life, instead of doing a bunch of Netflix and then chilling, get to work. Hustle. Grind. Get it. And if you don't see that as a viable option, then that means that you're not dedicated enough to your craft, and you're not going to be successful at it anyway. You do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do, and then when that thing becomes so successful that you can't keep your job, see, that's my biggest thing. People say, well, why haven't you quit that crazy job that pay you a crazy amount of money in time? Because when it overwhelms me so much to where I can't even entertain the possibility of holding on to that extra piece of income, then that's when I walk away. But as long as I can get every single dollar benefit, life insurance, uh, earning savings, uh, oh, earning savings, employee stock purchase program, 401ks, all of that stuff, healthcare coverage, I'm getting all of it. I want every single thing, everything. If, if what I got going on is so overwhelming to where one of them start conflicting with each other, then that's when I start having a conversation with myself. And I have that conversation probably every six months. Y'all see me have a conversation right here on this platform. I'm like, oh, man, they trying to get me to come into the office. I might have to quit. Oh, man, I don't know. It's not making sense no more. And then I wind up just go ahead and giving it back in because I'm like, skip it. They just going to have to get rid of me. They got to get rid of me. I got that good health care. <laughs> I got that good. I got that good insurance. My wife, listen, y'all know, my wife just went through a bunch of procedures and all of that stuff, all of that junk, taken care of. 100% of it taken care of. Nothing out of pocket, no none of that. Why Why use my money when they, I'm going to use their money? That's part of the package. That's part of my compensation package. The bonuses that I just got, literally just got a bunch of bonuses. Why would I leave that money on the table? <laughs> you crazy. You smoking crack. Not me so that I could fully fund my travels and my travel content business. So I'm currently in this, you know, in the stage of trying to see if I could find another job or if that's the right decision, if that's gonna take up way too much of my time and energy. I'm still debating, I'm still debating because I kinda wanna, you know, join the corporate life, but I also kinda just wanna stick to food and beverage and build my business. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I also did just do something pretty huge. I did join a travel agency as a travel advisor, which I am so excited for this new chapter. Though I'm an independent contractor and technically I'm still like on my own and building a business, I love that I'm a part of a community. I love that we have webinars and Zoom calls and there's something going on in the forum every single day and I can connect with people. And I just love having that sense of community, which is something I definitely felt like I wanted to be a part of. As well as working at the restaurant, I love my coworkers. I love working there. And I think I just wanted to work there less because it is strenuous work. Being There's too much feeling in there. 
I've seen everything that I need to see here. There's too much feeling in there. She cute. Uh, she'll be all right because she's still cute. Uh, she's young, but she's cute. But if you want to be a, a business owner in any capacity, whether it's whatever you're doing or, or, or concert, whatever it is, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's not going to be easy. I want you to understand what you get to see. Listen, I'm never going to tell you something that's not true. I'm going to tell you to honest that can you be successful? Absolutely you can. But you definitely, definitely going to have to work your butt off. Ain't no days off. Ain't no days off. Ain't no light work or whatever. Otherwise, go ahead and get you get you a man, get married, get a regular job. Y'all go and combine y'all income, get your little house with the white picket fence, get a dog, get a kid, and live happily ever after. But if you're trying to change the world or you're trying to impact people or you're trying to make, you know, a complete, complete difference, it's different. It's different. It's hard. And nobody deserves anything. Everybody is, you're going to get what you earn. You're going to eat what you kill. All right? So that's just some advice. I think that that was an interesting video. And I thought that that would be something great to end the show with. Let me go ahead and remove this video. Um, Q show tonight, y'all. Q show tonight. It's going to be popping. You know how we do it. I might do it from here in the studio. I don't know. All right? So uh, I am waiting on that that article or that thing to drop, and then we're going to continue to grind, and we're going to hustle, and we're going to get it up, all right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let me read a couple of the Super Chats, and then I'm going to get y'all up out of here today. This is the greatest show. We have so much fun here. I'm always excited to rock out with y'all. Brittany B says, I tried to tell people us Fight Club alum are built different, and we ain't missed one weekend. We did not miss one weekend. We got that bag. We got a bag. We went and got that money, but we didn't miss one weekend. We put on a great show. We can't, We had to continue to innovate, all of that stuff. Um, AL says, now that's an actual cute chick. I think that all women are cute. Some of them are a little rough around the edges, but we got to make the best of what we can make based off of the talents that God gave us. You know what I'm saying? Um, Time Out says, Anton, I think the top comment on your second video is why he may have took action. The comment suggests that he thought he would be child-free with an ex being a primary custodial parent struck a chord. So you can be, he a content creator, so you could be a content creator, but you can't take people criticizing you after you decided to volunteer the information. Come on, man, stop it. Steve Montage says, she needs the right guidance, studio time AD. Uh, we'll see if we can get her on the show. Uh, Y'all go over to her comments and let her know that Anton is looking for her and to get in touch with me. And then we'll see if we can get her in here. I don't even know where she's from. She is a little cute. She might be studio ready. She might be studio ready. Uh, Y'all go over there and tell her to contact me and we'll see what happens. Shout out to uh, Steve Montage. And then my dog, one of my greatest students of all time. Shout out to Ray Sean says the right mentor can help clarify the road to success. Anton, I appreciate you. Ray Sean out here running up a bag. Gosh. Gosh, Ray Sean is out here killing it. One of my greatest chasers of all time. One of the greatest chasers of all time. Man, Ray Sean wrote a check that was so big. I said, Ray, what's up, bro? You out there killing it like that? He said, Anton. It's crazy. We be walking through the airport having breakfast together. <laughs> Shout out to Ray Sean. <laughs> Killing the game. One of my greatest bag chasers. If y'all not a part of the Patreon, the link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. We got Stock Club on Wednesday. So that's going to be popping. Uh, let me give a couple of more acknowledgements. I just want to make sure that the people get, get acknowledged for what it is that they do. Uh, Shout out to Michael. Um, I appreciate you folding me down on Cash App and everybody that continues to support the platform. You guys are awesome. I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get to the Q show tonight. I need y'all to do me one more favor. 
Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you, friends. Let's rock out. Q show tonight. No fumbling, no bags. Let's get it.